Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to the final installment of our West Kingdom trilogy series with Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Yes, this one is designed again by S.J. McDonald and Shem Phillips, published by Garfield Games and Renegade here in the U.S. Uh, and we are going to be playing it today. Monique just alluded to the Tome Saga, meaning we have played the previous two uh, West Kingdom games, mm -hmm. which we can link up here if you haven't seen those. And this is the final in that trilogy, and we are going to be playing it today. And so just like the other two games, this one plays pretty differently. Yes. Right? Yeah, yep. it, uh, it highlights uh, different main mechanics that the right. other games did not. So we are really excited to jump into this one and see who finally wins the Tome Saga. Yes. As so as per usual, we are going to start with a teach and then go into our playthrough and review. So if you're interested in jumping around, we're going to include timestamps down below. But before we begin, if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we make any mistakes, we can add them there. We'll also add them to the description if we find them. We're going to try not to have to use them, but sometimes things happen. <laughs> uh, and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the side of the table. We're all set up here for our two-player game of Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Yes. This is the final in the trilogy. Uh -huh. And so there is definitely a lot going on here if you've uh -huh. never played this game before. We have a castle. This is the first time that we're seeing like a true castle, right? Yeah. We also have our main board that's divided into several different segments. Each player also has their own player boards as well as a host of different buildings and resources and cards and just a lot of stuff. Yep. And so in this game, we are playing as Viscounts, who are going around trying to help improve the kingdom because the king isn't really doing that. Right. Right. Got so, taken a draw on hands. Yeah. We're going around, we're building buildings, we're writing manuscripts, we're working in the castle, and we're trading mm -hmm. just for the, the health of the kingdom. But sometimes that might not be for the best. And so there is a mechanic in this game that can either force the kingdom to fall into poverty or into prosperity, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Once that condition has been met, the game will end and whoever has the most points at that point wins. Yep. Now, before we get into the details of the turn structure, I just kind of want to give you a general idea as to what we're going to be doing in mm -hmm. this game. So over the course of the game, we have our own uh, Viscount Meeple, who's going to start somewhere on the board, depending on which starting cards we draft. Yep. Each turn, we're going to be moving our Viscounts clockwise around the board. They can never go backwards. And depending on which spot we land on, we're going to be able to do an action. There are two main uh, sections, I guess, of the board. There's the outer circle right mm -hmm. here, and then there's this inner circle right here. And so all of these clearings are the actual spots where we can uh, land and do a thing. Take actions there. Now, just like the other two games in the series, over the course of the game, we're going to be collecting deeds and debts. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit different in this game because there's going to be a certain amount of deeds and debts that we're going to be allowed to collect, and that's going to be dependent on player count. Yeah, debts are black, deeds are red. And so just like in the other games, if you collect debts, they're going to be worth minus points at the end of the game if you did not flip them. Mm -hmm. But if you do flip them, then they gain you a resource instead of gaining you points, like in the other games. Yep. Uh, deeds are just standard. It's one point for getting them, and then uh, three points total for flipping them. Yeah, exactly. But the thing that's unique about this implementation is as soon as one stack runs out, say we were to take all of the debt cards, then that is going to trigger the end of the game because technically the kingdom went into poverty. Mm -hmm. We would finish out the round, and then each player would get one final turn. Yep. And the same is true for the deeds. If we deplete that that deck, same thing. The game will end, and the kingdom went into prosperity. Yep. But the way that the end game scoring works is if the debts were completely depleted, then whoever flipped over the most amount of deeds, which is the inverse, will score a lot of points. <laughs> I believe it's 12. Yeah, it's 12, 8, and 4. But in a two-player game, you omit the middle one. So it's only 12 and 4. Yes. And the opposite is true. If we deplete this stack, it's going to be whoever flipped the most uh, debt. So this is kind of this like teeter-totter balance that we're going to be working through. Yep. And as for the individual player areas, each player is going to start with a hand specific to their color of Townsfolk cards. And yes. I believe they are identical. They are identical. Uh, we both have the same eight cards. Yes. And we're also going to, uh, during setup, we're going to draft an additional one. Yep. And over the course of the game, we're going to have an opportunity to hire more of these Townsfolk. Because this game has a very uh, prominent deck building mechanic in it. Mm -hmm. On our player board, is this kind of a like a assembly line conveyor belt maybe? conveyor yeah. belt mechanic and so each round we're going to be placing one card uh, onto the leftmost spot of this conveyor belt when it comes back to you this is going to slide down and we're going to put another card right there and so these three uh card spaces are going to kind of build upon each other which yep. we'll see in a second and so the way that a turn works is there is a step-by-step -step protocol that we're going to be following and it's all detailed here along the top edge of the player board so starting from the very, very leftmost spot here, the very first thing that you do on your turn is, like I was mentioning, you're going to play a card from your hand onto the leftmost spot of your player board. And so the starting
starting hand limit is three. So you're going to have a draw deck here, and you're going to have a hand of cards. And mm -hmm. you must play a card from your hand yep. onto this conveyor belt. And so let's just talk about the anatomy of one of these townsfolk cards, because they are all virtually the same in structure. Each card has a certain amount of silver listed at the top left-hand corner, and that is going to be important for when we talk about dismissing and hiring more of these townsfolk. Mm -hmm. That's also going to be the number of spaces that you're allowed to move on the board, which we'll talk about in a second. Below that silver symbol is a certain combination of symbols that will help us do our actions, which we'll talk about. But the part that I want to discuss right now is the effect that's listed at the very bottom of the card in brown. So some cards will have no effect. And so if that's the case, then nothing truly will happen in addition to playing this card. Mm -hmm. Some cards will have a lightning bolt symbol like this financer. And so what happens is at the start of your turn, when you play this card to the leftmost slot here of your conveyor belt, you will immediately gain those benefits, which in this example is two silver and the ability to discard a card from my hand or the top of my draw pile. Some cards will have ongoing effects like this trader here as uh, exhibited by this kind of like a rotating arrow symbol. And so these cards, as long as they're in your conveyor belt, will remain in effect. And last but not least, we have the uh, abilities that have an X on, on the right-hand side here. And these come into effect once the card is moved off of your conveyor belt. So if I were to start my turn with all three cards already present on the board, and I need to play a card on my leftmost spot here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump the rightmost card off. And if it has that X ability, then I gain its benefit. Yeah, you get to resolve it. Yep, and then the rest of these cards slide down and I play my new card. So that is essentially how the start of a turn works. I also want to mention that there are these special cards that have these purple skulls as symbols. These are considered criminals. We all start with one uh, one criminal in our deck. Yep. These purple skulls are considered wild for when we do our actions. But at the start of your turn, if you were to ever play a criminal to the left side of your player board just like this, you must move the corruption part of your virtue track over the number of spaces as there are criminals on your entire board. Mm -hmm. So if, if all three of these cards were criminals and I play this one here, then I would, I would have to move my marker one, two, three spaces. And the significance of this virtue track will be explained in a second. So once we've resolved this section here, then the next thing we do is we look at the coin value that we see in the top left corner of the card just played. And that is the amount or the distance that your Viscount must move mm -hmm. um, at a minimum. There is a way to mitigate that, which I'll talk about in a second. So let's say my Viscount is here. Um, Along these roads here, you see tiny little arrows. They may be a little difficult to see, so we'll call them out as the game goes on. But basically, you have to move along the arrowed paths and not go backwards. So in this case, I could move uh, one, two, or I could move down here, one, two. If you do want to move further, you can always spend one coin to move one extra space. You can spend as many coins as you want, so you can really move all the way around the board. That would be expensive. It's very expensive, <laughs> though, yes. But the key takeaway is you cannot move any less yes. than the amount of silver on that card. Right. Then, once you get to your destination, you can take an action. And so, like we were mentioning, there are four different types of actions in this game. Two of them you'll be able to take along the outside, and those two are these first two symbols here. It's trading and constructing a building. The other two actions are going to be along the inside ring here, and they are going to be working in the castle and writing manuscripts. And so, each action corresponds to one of these four symbols here. And so in order to take that specific action, you have to have that specific symbol showing amongst your conveyor belt. And so at the start of the game, we have uh, these two spaces here seated with symbols. This space here starts with um, one of each symbol that's not this blue bag that stands mm -hmm. for trading. And then the other spot has two trading symbols. Your very first turn of the game is going to be playing a card to the leftmost spot here. And then you can add whatever combination of symbols that is to these two spots here, yep. if that makes sense. But you're only choosing one of these actions. So it's only one symbol type that you care about per turn. So the first action that you can do in this outer ring would be trading. And that's represented by those blue money bags. So let's take uh, this example that I'm here in this location. Each outer location has their own condition. And they basically get you one of the four different types of resources that are in the game. So in this particular case, for every two bag symbols that I have, I would earn one gold, which would be useful later on for other actions. You can amplify this by spending one silver to represent one additional bag. So in this case, I have two bags showing, nothing else in my tableau. So I would be able to get one gold. But if I had two silver I wanted to spend, I could spend an additional two silver to gain another gold. In addition, whenever you take any of these four actions, you have the option of dismissing the townsfolk card that is adjacent to the space that you're at by paying the cost at the top left-hand corner in silver. 
you would then gain the benefit, whatever it says at the very top right hand corner, which is going to vary from card to card. So we'll probably talk about those uh, during the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And then you immediately gain the symbols that are on the top left hand corner. So you're not allowed to do this unless these symbols actually relate to the action that you're taking. Right. And so in this case, it does because there is a blue bag symbol there. And again, skulls are wild, so they could represent any type of action. Mm -hmm. And so that was trading. The next type of action you can take along the outer ring is constructing a building. So each player has nine buildings at the top here at the, of the player board. Yep. They each cost a certain amount of that specific symbol, which is like a gray hammer that you'll see on the different cards. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I wanted to put any of these three buildings out, I would have to spend five of those symbols. Now, similar to the trade action where you could increase those symbols by paying silver, in order to increase the construct the building symbols, you have to spend stone. And so that is what the stone resource is for. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, I'm here and uh, these buildings here only require three of that symbol. I have one symbol showing right there. If I had two additional stone, I could turn those back in and then construct one of these three buildings in one of the available spots that are next to my Viscount. If you also look closely, there are these symbols that are on those spots, and those are just uh, immediate benefits that you get for placing a building in that spot. Mm -hmm. In addition, there are these linking bonuses along these like uh, dashed lines here. And so if I had a building placed here, and Naveen already had a building here, then the both of us would get whatever the benefit is in the middle here, which is one stone. Now, if I had two buildings here, I would still only get it once. Right. And so that is constructing a building. Also keeping in mind that you can still dismiss the adjacent townsfolk card here if you can use that symbol towards taking your action. Mm -hmm. So Monique in this case would have to spend three coins in order to dismiss this one. Yeah, so that would be really expensive. It would be more ideal if I actually had stone in right. my supply, but you do what you can. The last thing about the buildings is each building type uncovers a some kind of an ability that'll help you do things better. And we'll go over those uh, at the end of the teach. They're also worth a certain number of points depending on how many of each building type you've built. So for this first section here, if you build one, it's four points. If you build all three, it's 15. Um, for the last section here, they're worth less because it's easier to build them. So yep. it's two, five, and nine. And then the middle here, it's six, 13, and 21. So that concludes the outer ring action. So now let's talk about the inner ring actions. Uh, the first one that you see here, this is uh, moving into the castle, which we'll talk about in a second. The next one right here is writing manuscripts. So let's say I played this card, the Abbot. I would still move my Viscount two spaces. So let's just say one, two, and now I'm here. In order to write a manuscript, you look at this stack of manuscript cards here, and you're going to look at the symbol denoted here, and that tells you a certain amount of crosses that you must supply in order to write this manuscript. So on my board right now, I have one cross from the abbot, one that's native here. So in order to get to my third, I can spend inkwells, which is the third type of resource that we are talking about in this game. So this would be a total of one, two, three. That's exactly what's matched here. So I would take this and immediately get the bonus here. In this case, this would symbolize hiring one of the townsfolks for free. Now the final type of action is working in the castle. And this requires you to have these yellow noble icons. You can increase the number of those icons by spending gold, which is the fourth and final resource. And so what that allows you to do is that allows you to place these workers into the castle. The number of workers that you can place is dependent on the number of those icons that you that you had. So if you only had one, then it's only one worker. Three will get you two workers, five will get you three, and eight will get you four workers. Say I had on my board five of those symbols. I can place three workers into the first tier of the castle in the section where my Viscount is. Yep. So I would have to put all three of them right here. Now, I do have to mention that the castle is divided into three different tiers. There's the first tier, which is the outer ring. Oops. The second tier, which is this middle ring. And the third tier, which is the very top of the castle. And so if I ever have at least three workers in one section of the first tier of the castle, then what happens is I would move one worker forward to the second tier, one worker clockwise to the left, and one worker counterclockwise to the right section. And then the worker that gets moved to the second tier would get an immediate benefit. So in this case, it would move my virtue token over two spaces. Then I would look around the castle to see if I have any other segments in the first tier that have three or more of my workers and then do the same thing. And so that can kind of cause a chain reaction of movement. After I resolve the first tier, then I would look at the second tier for the, for the same thing. If I had three of these workers here, just like that, then I would move one worker into the middle which would gain me a resource 
And unlike in the first year, these two wouldn't move. They would stay there. And so the significance of that is it makes it easier for me to continue to put people into the, the third tier of the castle. Yep. After all of that movement has been resolved, then I would look around the castle again to see if there are any sections that have at least four workers, regardless of who owns them, mm -hmm. just like this. And if so, then you would have to boot people out of the castle until there's a, a maximum of three in a section. You can either boot your opponent or yourself, and you gain a benefit depending on what section of the castle that worker was on. So if they were in the second tier, then you gain one virtue movement and a resource. If they were in the first tier, then you gain two silver. You can never boot workers out of the third tier. Mm -hmm. The first person to make their way into the third tier of the castle gains this card, which is going to be worth five points at the end of the game if they manage to keep it. Because as soon as somebody has uh, one more worker than them, then they take that card. Yeah. It's like a, it's like an area control. Yes. In addition to that, whoever is in possession of this gets to draw one additional card into their hand. And the significance of the castle is at the end of the game, depending on where your workers are, they're going to score you points. So the center section here is going to be worth three points per worker. The second tier is two points and the first tier is one point per worker. So each player has 20 workers, so that could be potentially very lucrative. Mm -hmm. And those are all of the four different types of actions that you can take on your turn. Once you're done taking your action, then before you finish your turn, you have the option of hiring the townsfolk that is adjacent to your Viscount. If I'm here, I can hire this townsfolk for two silver, gaining the immediate benefit at the top right hand corner. And then this card would go face up into my discard pile because it cannot go straight into my uh, draw deck, just like a standard deck builder. But then I will have this, uh, this townsfolk to use in a future turn. Afterwards, we would resolve our virtue track if possible. And so let's kind of talk about this virtue track for a second. Over the course of the game, we are going to be gaining corruption as well as virtue. And that's symbolized by any of these kind of symbols like this one or like this one. And so anytime you see those symbols, these uh, markers are going to move. As soon as the two markers meet, they crash essentially and they form a stack. And so if I need to continue moving my marker, say if I gain corruption and need to move my corruption token to the right, it's going to move as an entire stack to the right, just like that. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of my turn, after I decide whether or not I want to hire a townsfolk, we are going to resolve a collision. I would gain whatever the reward is above the stack of tokens, which in this example is going to be two silver and a debt, mm -hmm. unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how the game is going. And then all of my opponents will resolve whatever's at the bottom depending on if that condition has been met. Yep. So in this example, it looks like if Naveen does not have any criminals on his board, then he gets to move his virtue marker over one space to the left. So which is the case here, so then I would be able to do this. Yes. If my stack was in the middle here, he would be allowed to rearrange his cards in his assembly line. If they were on the left side here, then if he had at least one criminal, he would have to move his corruption marker over to the right. Yep. So it all really just depends on the state of his board as well as where my stack is. Yep. Once I finish resolving these markers, then they will go back to where they started. And so that only happens at the end of your turn. If you have a collision on somebody else's turn for some reason, mm -hmm. it won't resolve until the end of your actual turn. Exactly. Then you end your turn by drawing a card back up to your hand limit. And that is essentially how a turn works. We're mm -hmm. going to be doing this over and over and over again until the end game trigger has been met. We play a final turn, essentially, yep. and then you go into end game scoring. Before we talk about the end game uh, scoring points, I do want to mention that each of these buildings gives you a specific benefit depending on which uh, building you construct. And so all of these four middle buildings here, they will gain you a permanent symbol for when you need to do that specific action. So if I had built this building out, it'll give me a permanent two money bag symbols for Useful taking those for trade actions. Trading, exactly. This first building here will allow me to move one additional space whenever I'm moving my buy count around the board. Constructing this building allows you to dismiss for a maximum of one coin every single time. You don't have to worry about how much uh, in silver it is. It's just going to be one coin to you specifically to dismiss. Whenever you hire the townsfolk, it still must be whatever the, the price is there. Mm -hmm. Constructing this building will allow you to discard a card whenever you hire a townsfolk. This last one here increases your hand size to a hand size of four instead of three. And this last symbol here says that if anybody has a collision, as long as you don't have a criminal on your player board, you get to move your marker up one uh, in the virtue virtue track. Yep. So at the end of the game, we go into end game scoring. We're going to get points for our buildings. Yep. We're going to get points for all of our workers in the castle. For our manuscripts, which we didn't mention, they are scored uh, through like a set collection scoring. Yep. If you have one of each color, 
then it's going to be a lot of points. Yeah, it's denoted right here. It's actually uh, 1, 4, 9, or 16. There's four different types of colors in the game. So for a complete set, you get up to 16 points. And then finally, you score your debts and deeds cards, yep. depending on if the kingdom fell into poverty or into prosperity. And whoever has the most points at that point wins. Yep. So we are just going to get cleaned up, and then we are going to get started with our playthrough. Okay, so we have reset the board, we are ready to play, but because we are playing with the Tome Saga expansion, we have to talk about it. So just a heads up, this is uh, going to be a little bit of spoilers, so you have about three seconds. A lot of spoilers. Yeah, some spoilers. <laughs> uh, click the link below if you want to kind of skip ahead. Uh, okay, so Monique won outright the last game, uh, mm -hmm. so she is first player. Yes. And she's also leading right now in total tomes. She has seven to my five. Yes, but it is still anyone's game it because is. we're going to have another three uh, tomes that are going to give three us more. different objectives to work towards in this game. Mm -hmm. They're obviously not going to have any more benefits because it is the last game in the series, right. but there's still tomes to be won. Yep. And if somebody wins with another major victory, then they're going to get uh, three tomes. And the other person will get one crest. Would get one crest. And if, yeah. it's another, if it's a minor victory, then they win two tomes and the other person gets one. With, so, no, with no crest. Really I really don't know how the math is going to add up here, but yeah. uh, we will see. Yes, so I have, two, it, it I have two active tomes. Monique has only one active tome. Mm -hmm. So even though she won the last game, I took more in-game tomes than she did. So let's talk about our tome benefits, and then we'll talk about the actual tomes that we can win in mm -hmm. this game, and then we'll do some setup for Vicounts. Yep. Okay, so since I have the first player marker, so the thing that, that is interesting about this is because I won the last game, I get the first player marker, uh, <laughs> but all that means is Naveen gets to do his drafting first, yep. and then I give him the first player marker because he's actually going to start. Yes. In addition, he gains additional silver depending yes. on the difference of our tomes. So right. because I have seven to his five, he gains two more two silver, silver to start this game. Yep. And so my one tome ability is... Anytime I move a worker into the second tier of the castle, I gain one silver. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know if that's going to be that useful, but All right, that's what it's I something. have. Okay, so I have two active uh, ones, so they're listed right here. The first one is you require one less manuscript to collect Claris bonus cards. So these cards over here, normally it would take three ribbons of one type of color to collect one of them. For me, it only takes two ribbons. Uh. So if I was able to get these two blue right away, then I would be able to take that. That's so nice. That's something, yeah. The other one I have is whenever I flip over a deed, I gain a resource of my choice. That's Pretty great. Cool too. Yeah, because, so, that's uh, so that means uh, regardless of whether he flips a deed or a debt, he gains a resource. That's right, yes. That's awesome. Okay, so the three tomes that we're going to be working with today are... Okay, so these are off the board. Uh, we figured we can just talk about them. So the first one is have six manuscripts. <laughs> so it's uh, very in my favor to go after these manuscripts in this game. We'll see. All right. <laughs> uh, the next one is, this is a good one, construct five buildings. So okay. we have a bunch of buildings here. If you can, the first person to construct five gets this one. Okay. And the last one is have five deeds flipped. Oh, okay. So I get benefits from manuscripts and deeds, and there's three other ones that did not come out, but uh, they do other things. So. Well, I can't let you have all of them. Yes, so we're going to have to pick and choose our battles here. <laughs> So those are the three tomes in this game. It's a nice uh, variety. It is a good so variety. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. And so now we're going to start with the drafting for Viscounts. The way that it works is, as you can see here, there are three pairs of cards, three of which are Townsfolk cards that we're going to start the game with, and the other three are our starting benefits as well as the spot where we're going to put our Viscounts out to start the game. You put out one more than the number of players, so that's why we have three pairs. Each player is essentially going to draft a pair. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take one of one benefit and one Townsfolk. Yep. So you're going to see which one is the sweetest combination for your strategy. Totally. And so we're going to do this starting with Naveen. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to take this combination here. So it's going to be Bertha, and then it's going to be this. So I get two resources of my choice, and I get one, two, three, five, six, but actually eight coins because of the difference in tomes. I will take three deeds from this stack, not from the stack of the timer, one debt, and I get to flip one of those deeds over right away. So it's quite a bit. <laughs> Let me I've... do that one. Six, two, seven, three. Eight. One of them comes flipped to me. So these will be kind of off screen a little bit here. Okay. Okay. There's your eight coins. Eight. I'll take it. What What else yeah. do you get? Uh, I two, two resources of your choice and a debt. So here's my debt. Okay. So three deeds and a debt. Three deeds and a debt. One of the deeds comes flipped. Yep. And then uh, two resources of my choice. I will take a. I'll take two inkwells. Uh oh. That's that smells like <laughs> manuscripting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh no. I'm trying. Oh no. And I'm one deed into the five deeds. I needed. know. And I have a couple deeds that. Are need you to rubbing be it in? I think so. No. 
I'm trying. So okay. what does Bertha do? Okay, so Bertha it gets me a um, noble symbol, a uh -huh. gold noble symbol, and a money bag symbol yep. for the trading. Uh, and then it's immediately I get to move uh, one person that's in level one uh, sideways, or I can move my virtue over to the left. Yes, and that yeah. is upon placement of that card, yes, right? Yes, the, the lightning bolt symbol right there. Perfect. That's Bertha. All right, so what did you leave me with here? We have Those. Ada and Emma. Yes. What what number, what spot do you start your Viscount on? Yes, I start on number two. So let me go ahead and put that out. So, so Naveen is going to go, Naveen is going to start right here. Okay, two. Yeah, there are these little uh, numbered spots. Yes, and this is all random, uh, the, the way the board got laid out. I think I'm just going to go with this pair here, <laughs> specifically because of all of the resources that I would get on That's this card versus stuff. that one, right? Mm -hmm. I have Ada here, and Ada says that uh, while Ada is on my board, if anybody has a collision then I get to move my virtue marker over one space and I gain a resource. Yeah, it's nice. Ada is technically a criminal. I'm not sure what Ada did to deserve that, but <laughs> so that that means that whenever I play them onto my board, I get those movements of the corruption marker, etc. Right. And so my resources are going to be one stone, two inkwells. You hear that, Naveen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eight coins, which is my coin. Eight coins, yeah. yeah, not bad. Two deeds and a debt, none of which come flipped over. Two, two deeds, three, and four, five, Six, seven, eight, and my virtue marker gets to move, gets to start the game uh, one space over. Thank you. There you go. I also start on spot one, which is right behind right you. Behind ah, I'm gonna be following you around. Your horse is drinking <laughs> water. We're gonna do that. Okay, sure. Yeah, we can do that. So shuffle and draw a hand of three cards, and we're ready to begin. Three cards, you say. Okay. Okay, so I think we are finally all set up and ready to yep. begin. So then I'm going to pass this to Naveen, and you get to go I first. am first player. Okay. Good luck. All right, the first card I'm going to play is the Journeyman. And the Journeyman uh, is going to give me, if I count, two movement points. It's not a criminal, but it has two money bags on it. So it's going to go here. There was nothing to slide down because we just started the game. And so I have one, two, three, four money bags showing on, on here, and I have to move my Viscount two spaces. Okay. So you're here. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to be trading? Because I'm assuming that's what you're going to be doing. I am. So I'm actually going to move one, two, and then spend those two extra coins. Okay. To move more spaces. To move more spaces. Three, four. So I'm going to end up here, and I'm going to use my four money bags at a rate of two to one to get two stone. So it's two. every two money bags is one stone? Yep. Okay. There you go. Do you want to pay more money to gain additional stone? And slash or would you like to dismiss this townsfolk, this uh, clergyman over here, to utilize that money bag symbol? He will also allow you to rearrange, to your rearrange one card, my one card yeah. <laughs> on your player board. So uh, I think I will I will spend actually two coins to get another one, but not dismiss this one. Okay. Yeah, if that so, makes sense. Yep. So you're spending two coins to add two additional money bag symbols to that trade action. To get a third. To get one more stone. Exactly. But you're choosing not to dismiss. I'm choosing not to dismiss because I don't want to unveil something that may help you. Ah, okay. <laughs> so does it also mean you don't want to hire the clergyman? I am... Uh, mm, <laughs> that is a good question. What a silly, silly man. You could have dismissed the clergyman and then unveiled it for you to hire. Maybe, you're right. But uh, no, I actually want the clergy symbol because, of course, I have that benefit for manuscripts. Yes. So the more of those uh, cross symbols I have, the better. So I will spend the one okay. to earn. So you're going to hire the clergyman? I'm going to hire this clergyman. And that's so gonna... that was one coin. Uh, yep. And the immediate benefit is technically you I can rearrange, rearrange, but because uh, he only has one card, yep. it doesn't really do anything. So in the future, uh, when this is out on the board, I can always spend two coins to represent another uh, cross symbol, which nice. is not bad. Yeah. So you need to have a money-making machine. Uh, yeah, which I just spent a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, so that's me. Uh, I will draw back up. So none of this happened, no collision, uh, and I draw up to three. Perfect. All right, so back to me. I'm going to play the laborer. Uh, and so the laborer doesn't get me any benefit it's nope. one of those plain Jane starter cards, but it does gain me a building symbol, which mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do on my turn. And so I have to move two spaces. Um, and so I'm going to move my Viscount along the outer edge here. So we're going to go one, two. Okay. And I'm going to construct a building. So I have one, two building symbols. I need a third one. So I'm going to discard this stone. Your lone stone. Yep, yep. my lone stone. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I could technically discard the swindler Ooh. instead but i think i'm going to just do this tone now i can build a building that costs three of those symbols which is just one of these three buildings here and i think i'm going to build the rightmost one so yeah, it can nice. get me a gain me additional uh card into my hand sure. so now i have a hand limit of four 
So and you can so, construct either here or here. Yeah, so this will allow me to rearrange my, <laughs> my cards here, ah. but this allows me to flip over a debt or a deed. That so I'm going to put that right there. And in doing so, I get to choose. I'm going to flip over my debt yes. because that gains me a resource. Nice. So let's do that. And I'm going to gain a gold okay. because I'm going to probably want to use gold for entering the castle yep. to work in the future. Oh, no, you have the option of buying this guy. Yes, I have the option yeah. of, of hiring the this swindler. The swindler. The swindler is a criminal. Criminals are nice because they are <laughs> wild symbols. They you just did, come at a... You picked up a criminal also, us. right, in the draft? I did. Ada was a criminal. Ada was a criminal. Sure. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, okay. Maybe nice. I'll go down the criminal path. The dark path. So that's three silver Ooh. to hire the swindler. And so Ooh. immediately I must move my corruption token over one space. So these are kind of closing in. And then this person's going to go into my discard. So that card is when it gets kicked off as the X out action, you gain two stone. Yes, that is which the is benefit of the swindler. Constructing five buildings, Monique, is <laughs> a tome. It's true. And that is one towards the tome. Stone is needed for tomes. Okay, I see what you're doing. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to end my turn by drawing up to my new hand limit of four. So two cards. Very nice. Here we go. Okay, first thing I do, I slide over. Nothing comes off the edge. And since I have a bunch of money bags out there, I'm going to play the trader, which is another money bag. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five. They're and called merchant icons, merchant by the icons. way. Merchant icons. <laughs> I like money bags. We say blue bags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what this is, is whenever the trader is active or in my little uh, tableau over here, anytime I take the trade action, I will earn one silver. That's nice. So that's nice, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and move my Viscount one space over. And I was a little jealous of your gold you got earlier, so one space is there. Okay. I have one, two, three, four, five total. So I get a two to one here. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to spend one coin. Okay. To make it one, two, three, four, five, six, so I get three gold back, and you get a gold, and a, then I get that silver back, silver back, yeah, because of your trader, because of my trader, exactly. Nice, that's that was that was good. Yeah, and so I was not allowed to dismiss this person because the two symbols here, which is the cross and the noble symbol, do not relate to the trade action. Yes. So I'm just straight up not allowed to do that. Correct. Um, Would you like to hire the tinker? The tinker. Tinker. You know, it gets me stone, and it also it, it's and it, wow, yes, I will hire it. It costs two. Yep. It's very expensive, but I will hire. And so what this immediately allow, allows me to do is move my virtue to the left. Yep. And also it gets me a symbol of the cross as well as that noble. And that, whenever this gets kicked off, I get stone. That is all a working. Yeah. Wonderful card. The peddler's nice though. I'm a fan of the tinker. Yeah, the tinker. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. Okay. So then I, uh, I draw back up to my hand size, which is three. Naveen is kind of uh, setting up quite nicely here. I'm I only have bit, one. I only have one buck. I'm a little fearful. <laughs> I started with all that money and it's gone. Money can come easily, I think. You just have to go to one of those uh, money bags. Well, I do have the trader, so maybe I can hit it again. All right. So back to me. I am going to move the laborer over. So unfortunately, it covers up that yeah. spot. <laughs> it's really like sad when you cover up that spot. Yeah, the turn. that is yeah. a nice like wild spot. I'm yeah. going to play the journeyman. Okay. And so the journeyman's benefit is when the journeyman gets kicked off, I can hire a townsfolk for free still gaining their immediate benefit and I get to move my virtue marker over one spot but the benefit that they're giving me right now is two merchant icons so now I have a total of four on my board I can move two spaces um, I'm not really interested in that <laughs> in trading for money so I'm gonna have to spend an additional coin so I'm gonna go one two three uh, yes spending an additional coin to do that and so this, this, uh, it's the same one I did earlier. The, yeah. The, the trade exchange is for every two merchant symbols, I get a stone. So yeah. I have four of them. I can gain two stone. Ooh, do, do I want, want to spend two coins to spend? I could spend one coin to dismiss the Mason. So I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to dismiss the Mason. Instead, I'm going to hire them now that I've finished my action. Okay. So I'm spending one coin to hire the Mason. They let me rearrange my, uh, my cards here, which I will do actually. Yeah, you want the laborer. Let's get out. the uh, the journeyman closer to getting bumped off, yep. and the laborer can stay a little bit longer. And so, on a future turn, when I play the mason, they have an ongoing ability that lets me uh, spend two silver for an, an additional uh, building icon, which is going to be nice for building buildings. Mm -hmm. That is it, I believe. So I'm going to draw up my hand. Back to you. Back to me. Okay, so I'm I'm hanging out on this road for some reason. I should be a little bit further in. There we go. Okay, so Journeyman slides over, Trader slides over. Okay, I'm gonna play the Laborer. So we have a very similar thing going on right now. Uh, so this is gonna allow me to move my Viscount two spaces. Okay. Uh, we are gonna go one, two. Ooh, I could flip if I go one, two. I might wanna do that. Okay. Okay, so I am going to use the Laborer. So I have one symbol here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
two, three with the stone. Okay. And I'm going to do exactly the same building. I, I like having more options. So I'm going to construct this building into this zone right here. This allows me to flip over my second deed, which is part of the goal. Nice. So now I have two towards the five deeds you need to get this thing right here. Oh, I forgot okay. about that, Tom. Yeah, so I got that. I think you have a benefit for flipping deeds, right? I do have a benefit. Your tome, uh... Oh, gain any one resource when flipping deeds. You owe me. <laughs> I, I do. So does that mean at the beginning of the game? No, I don't think so. I think it's we'll during say the game. during the game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fine. But which resource would you like? Ooh, uh, let's go with some stone. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and I just do, do not have enough money to hire that person. I only have one coin. They cost two. Uh, so I will draw up now my hand to four. One, two. Okay, that's my turn. All right, so back to me. Mm -hmm. Turn Turns are snappy. Yes. All right, I'm going to take a fairly simple turn. Okay. So I'm going to slide my journeyman over as well as a laborer, and I'm going to play the lender. Mm -hmm. Once the lender gets kicked off of the board, they let me flip over either a debt or a deed. Nice. So nothing right now, but they do give me two merchant symbols. So now I have a total of four. I have to move my Viscount one space. So I'm just going to move over here to the next spot here. And so every two merchant symbols gives me one gold. So that is two gold for me. Did you want to kick this one out for an additional three merchant symbols? Wow. Yeah. That is not bad. And uh, and you get to move your uh, virtue. You know, I'm going to spend all three of my coins here. Okay. So two of them will be to kick out, to dismiss the peddler. Sure. And the third will be just for another merchant symbol. Okay. So it's going to give me a total of four. Four total. Four total symbols. Yep. And one um, one virtue bump. Yeah. Like so that. you're spending the two for this one. Yep. Plus one to represent another bag merchant, when you take yep. the merchant. Okay. So that's going to get me two more gold. Yep. Essentially. And you already slid your thing over? I did. Okay. Yep. Nice. And now I'm finished with my actions. So I'm going to draw up. Uh, a card. Lots of gold. That, that is me. Okay, so I'm going to move this journeyman over. So the journeyman has come off. I get to hire any one of these people for free. Uh, so let's do this now. So that goes awesome. there. These slide down. Now, who do I want? Yes, anybody. You can hire the topmost card of, of any The princess is kind of nice. Um, it gets me one of those uh, noble symbols. Instantly, whenever I play the princess, it gets my virtue moving, and so does that one over there. Yeah, that is a. this is a very virtuous card. Virtuous card, yeah. I think I will take it. So I'm going to hire this one for free. Okay. And so because I did that, I get to move my virtue to the left one. This goes into my discard, and then now... Did you also move... Your virtue over no, for the journeyman? No, yes. Sorry, the journeyman also, yes, allows me to move it over. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. I was looking at my journeyman card, and I was yeah. like, wait, I think there's another thing. Yeah, thank you. Okay, no problem. Got too excited. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and play my squire. Okay. And my squire is going to go one, oops, two into this spot yep, here. Two spaces. Two spaces. So I have one squire showing. So I get one noble symbol here. So uh, what I'm going to do is take my one noble symbol and two gold and okay. get into this castle over here. Oh, okay. So, so you have three three symbols total. So you can put out two, two workers. Yes. So these two workers are going to go into this first section right there. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm going to draw up to my hand size of four because I will not be hiring. Still only have one coin. <laughs> All right. That's me. Okay, so I'm going to start by moving my journeyman yep. off uh, my player board. So that does the same thing for me. I move my virtue marker over and Ooh. I can hire somebody for free as well. So I think I'm going to hire the artiste. Okay. Yeah, that's good. The artist. So uh, the artist gives me a noble icon and it has an ongoing ability when it's on my board that says I can discard one gold for two noble icons, which Ooh. is going to be useful for getting into the castle. And my immediate benefit is I must discard a card. Oh, you're going to go hard castle. Hmm. What card do I discard, <sighs> Naveen? <laughs> so you can also uh, top deck it and discard from the top, correct? I'm going to discard this card. Okay. I Yeah, I can technically discard a card from my hand or just the topmost of my deck, which is uh, kind it's of a gamble. risky. Yeah. Let's move these over. That's it for that. And then I'm going to play Ada. So Criminal. Ada was my starting, uh, I believe, the, the card that I dropped in the beginning. And they are technically a criminal. So because of that, I have to move my corruption marker over one Ooh, space, depending on how many criminals I have on my board. So I only have one, so just one space over. I'm really close to colliding. Anytime either of us have a collision, I get to move my virtue marker over one and I gain a resource, as mm -hmm. long as she's on my board. Yep. And so I must move two spaces. Okay, well, let's just move one, two. 
Okay. Because I, I don't have additional money to move further than that. And so this spot will allow me to either turn in every two merchant icons for one inkwell, which is just gonna get me one inkwell, or I can build a building, mm -hmm. which might be better. Mm -hmm. So I have technically one building symbol, but I also have the criminal icon, which is a wild. So I have two of them. Uh, unfortunately, the buildings cost three, five, or seven symbols. So nothing costs four, because <laughs> I have two stone here. So I'm gonna discard one stone for that additional symbol to yeah. put out this uh, this building, which says whenever I hire a Townsfolk card, I can discard a card. Yeah, not bad. It's not bad to, to put this one out also, but it's not going to benefit me right now as long as I have Ada on my board, which is another at least two turns. Yeah, so. and then that one only helps you if you have no criminals in play. And yeah, that's I, what I think mean. you've taken three criminals. I've taken a few. A few, yeah. So I don't know if I'm ever going to build that building. We'll yeah. see. So this is going to go over here, which lets me move my whole stack over to the left. Oh, actually, it just, it, let's it move my virtual them. marker. Yeah. yeah. So I move that virtual marker right there. I don't have any money, so I cannot hire <laughs> no? the artisan. So okay. I'm going to have a collision now. Okay. So now is the first time we're resolving this. Yes. So first thing is we would check to see if anybody has built that building. Neither of us have done that. And then we would see if, if either of us have any uh, cards in front of us that give us collision benefits. Yeah, you do, right? So Naveen doesn't. Nope. I do, though. So Ada says that when there's a collision, I get to move my my stack over to the left to gain one virtue and again a resource. So let's take a stone. The stone back, yeah. Yeah, take one stone back. Then we resolve the actual uh, collision. So up here is what I get. I gain one silver and two deeds. Two deeds. So now the clock has started. It's yes. officially started. We're going. Uh, there are 12 in each stack over here. So now we know there's 10 deeds here and 12 here. Yeah, and that's uh, in a two player game. And then at the bottom here, if Naveen had at least one criminal Which showing on his player board, then he would have to move his corruption marker over, but that doesn't happen. Right. So that's it. My collision has been resolved. I get to move these back to where they started, and I'm going to end my turn by drawing back to a hand of four. And that depletes my draw stack. If I need to draw again from there, I have to uh, reshuffle yep. my hand. And also at that point, by the way, if ever you have to reshuffle your deck back, you have to move your corruption marker over one space if you have at least one criminal showing. Yes. So we will get to that uh, when, <laughs> once we get there. Sure. All right, I've been eyeing this spot for a while, so I think I got to go for it now. Uh -oh. So uh, the trader has to go out. I get no benefit. Uh, the trader I only use one time, really, that, that benefit. Mm -hmm. These will slide down, and then I'm going to play my thief. Oh. I'm so glad you smashed earlier because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't want any penalties here. It's a criminal. So it's a criminal. There's one criminal showing, so this is just going to move over. Uh, this will get me benefits when it comes off the board, uh -huh. so we'll deal with it at that time. Uh, so now I get one movement point. So while well, I'm here, and I'm going to go right into this spot, and I'm going to represent this wild as a cross symbol. Okay. So I'm going to try to do this manuscript here. So it's one cross symbol from that wild. And then two, three. Two inkwells? Yeah. All right. So that is a total of three crosses, technically, and you get yep. this manuscript. It gains you an addition, it gives you an immediate benefit of four, four silver. Coins, which I needed so I badly. I actually really wanted that manuscript <laughs> early on, and that was the one that I was like, oh no. You didn't have the math yeah, to, to get I didn't to it? Yeah, have enough uh, movement. Yeah. So um, I, I forgo spending this last one to, to use that symbol there. I, okay. I didn't want to do that. So, and then. Um, I'm going to hire the lookout. They gain you an immediate, uh, when you play them, you can either hire a transfer for free or you can destroy a card. And destroying a card, it gains you money. You gain silver yes. equal to whatever that the card was worth. Right, so. the one, two, or three coins. Uh, I, now with this newfound money, I will hire that person. I do warn you uh -huh. that their immediate benefit yep. is you have to shuffle your deck and you're going to have to go down on corruption. That's okay. No matter what, I'm going to have to shuffle this deck at the end of this turn anyway because I have one card left on okay. the drop. So I might so, as well get some sort of benefit out of it. That's true. So I'll do this. I'll take this card. It goes into my discard. With, uh, no, so I this one will stay in the discard while these will shuffle, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah. I think so. We think so. That's how we've been playing it. That's how we've been playing it. Let us know <laughs> if we're wrong. But from what we understand is you resolve this, uh -huh. which is shuffling, and then put it in the discard. I think right? the draw deck gets shuffled into it. This one also? Okay, perfect. So because Naveen shuffled and he has a criminal, yep. he has to move down on corruption one spot. Okay, so I draw up to my hand size, which is four, something good. Okay. <laughs> Was it good? Eh, it's okay. All right. So back to me. What are we going to do here? Okay, so my laborer leaves the board. Everything slides down, and I'm going to play another criminal. Ooh. So this is the thief. And uh, so because I have, because I'm playing a criminal, I have to move my corruption marker two spaces because now there are two criminals on my player board. So it's going to go one, 
too. And I'm doing this because even though I'm going down to the corruption side, um, Ada here gets me that benefit. So I want to try to create a collision as much as yeah. possible. And you know, I'm probably going to collide soon. Yeah. I don't really mind taking a debt right now because we don't know which side is going to win. Yep. So let's do that. So I must move one space. So I'm just going to move down into here. Oh. And I am, I only have one coin, so I cannot dismiss that, that card. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm going to take a... Well, you also can't dismiss that card because the two symbols on there do not That's correspond true. to the actions on the inside. That's true. That is the, the builder and merchant. And merchant. So I'm going to go into the castle. So I have technically one, two noble symbols because they're wild. And I'm going to spend these three, three, four, five. Okay. So, so that three gold. Three in there. And so five, uh, five of those symbols gets me three workers. So we're going to put three workers into this first tier. Because I have three now in here, one gets moved to the second tier, one gets moved to the left, and one to the right. Yep. And so I get to do this benefit immediately, which is to flip over a debt or a deed. I no longer have unflipped debts, so I'm going to flip over my first deed. First deed. And... You indeed did it. I did. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. That was a horrible joke. Okay. Uh, and that was that. I still don't have enough money to hire that person, so I'm going to skip <laughs> right, that bit. Right, right. And I'm going straight into <laughs> drawing a card, which I don't have. So I'm going to reshuffle my deck. And because I'm doing that, I have to move my corruption marker over in space. Because you have at least one criminal on your board. Yes, so. exactly. This is quite a corrupt turn. <sighs> yeah. You're going to be indebted. We'll see. <laughs> I hope so. It's nice oh. to flip over debts because they gain you a resource. They gain you a resource, yeah. It's nice to do that early. I don't know. Kind of a balance thing. We'll see. Okay, so my labor also comes off. I didn't really use this one that, that much anyway, so that's unfortunate. These will slide down. No benefit to the laborer. You should try to destroy that card. <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> destroy them. <laughs> I'm going to play Bertha. Okay. So Bertha gets me three movement, and it is immediately I get to move <gasps> on the lower level or move my virtue. Uh, I would like to stay where I am right yeah. over there. So I'm going to move my virtue one to the left, causing a smash. Yay. So we'll resolve Monique's card that she has at the end of this uh, yes. turn. Because these will always stay together. They'll never separate. Uh, and then now I get three movement. So I am going to move one, two, three. Monique, I'm going to help you out. <gasps> Four. So you have to pay a coin. So to do I pay that. a coin to move one extra space. And now, because I created a, a location where we're both in the same spot, uh -huh. Monique has the ability to rearrange or reshuffle her uh, her little tableau. I'm going to move Ada a little bit earlier. Yeah. Just so I can use that benefit of the collision uh, uh, a little bit a couple more. more times. Yeah. Yeah. So now that I'm here, I'm going to be taking the inner action, of course. And I have one, two, and then this wild is going to represent the You're going the into third. the castle? I'm going into the castle. Ah. So uh, because there's no nothing that goes into the castle that costs four, right? Three plus one. Yes. I'm only going to do the one, two, three native that's on here. So two will go in. Two workers? The so two workers go in. Because now, now there's four here, one will go up. Yep. One will go off to the side. And this one will come off to the side here. Leaving one behind. Leaving one behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And because I'm now in this tier, I get to flip over a deed, which I will do. You don't and want to flip over your debt? No. <laughs> and because I flipped over a deed, <laughs> you uh, get a resource. I gain a resource. What would you like? Uh, let's do an inkwell. <gasps> an inkwell. Sorry, I just realized something. What? My one tome. <laughs> My one tome says that I gain a silver for each worker I move into the second tier of the castle. Yeah. So you should get a silver, right? Oh now. my gosh, I could have used that right silver away. to hire a worker. It's okay. <sighs> well. I need to remember. That, that is my token. I had that one mistake. You had the one mistake yeah. with the resources. So that's so okay that have... I took the silver. Oh, totally. Okay. Totally. Yeah, okay. no, that's, you're right. All right. Okay. So do I hire this person for my last three bucks? I think not. <laughs> uh, so it is nice, though. The artisan. Wow. The artisan is so nice. The artisan when is it, awesome. When it kicks off, you, you get, get to, to flip. flip. And it's a, it's a merchant and a builder symbol. Ah, but I need money. There's just I have no money. Suit yourself. Are you gonna buy it? You can't. I can't. You can't for a while, so that's that's good. not true unless we have an ability that lets us take a which which nobody has showed yet. So uh, so that's gonna be me. Mm. Uh, so we do have a collision. So Monique, um, you have something that affects collisions on your board. Yes. So Naveen, yes, my Ada. So I gain one virtue movement and a resource. Ooh, let's go stone. Yeah, stone's good. Yeah, I really I would like to build additional buildings. Okay. Soon. So, because um, I'm right here, I gain one coin yep. and a deed. Okay. So we got some deeds. 
Uh, and then, Monique, you do have criminals, <laughs> yes. so you are going to move yours over, which because, is good for you. Yeah, I only have to have one criminal to do this, yeah. and uh, it makes me move my corruption token over. Yep. Okay, so that is funny. I reset, and then I'm going to draw back up to my four. All right. And again, I'm not hiring that person. Okay, that's me. Done? Yeah. Okay, so back to me. Uh, the lender gets kicked off my board, and so their ability allows me to flip over a debt or a deed. I'm going to flip over a deed, of course, because I don't have any unflipped debts right now. So right now, I'm at one flip debt and two flip deeds. And you? Uh, three flip deeds uh, and no flip debts. Okay. With one debt. There are more deeds out, so right now it's looking like a, a debt victory. I don't know. We'll see. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. So these get moved down, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to play my squire. Nice. My, my plain Jane squire. There's no ability at the bottom, but they give me a noble icon. So I have to move my Viscount two spaces. So we're going to go one, two. Okay. And we are going to go into the castle. So I have one, two, three noble icons, technically. I can spend these two. Uh, and, ooh, am I going to hire the... Do I dismiss the benefactor? Uh, you oh, can't. I can't. Yeah, because of <laughs> the trading symbol. Yeah. about these, these towns. You're looking at this right side and not thinking about this left side, unfortunately. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so, so scrap that. So I have <laughs> yeah. one, two, three, plus two gold for five total noble symbols. And so that's going to let me put out three workers. So again, we hit our threshold of three. So one will move up, one will move to the right, and one to the left. Because you went to the second. Because I went to the second tier, by the, the way, I get, I get my silver. Yep. And the benefit is I can take a townsfolk for free. So now you can hire that uh, artisan. So now I can hire the artisan Shoot. that uh, Naveen kind of snoozed on. <laughs> I didn't snooze on it. It was snooze. expensive. <laughs> Very expensive. So the artisan lets me discard a card from my hand. You don't have to do this, by the way. But I think it might be a good idea. Sure. Let's let's discard this card. Oh, I'm a traitor. I did. I don't You're talking know. about money being tough, and then anytime you take the trade action, you discard the trader. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be trading anytime soon. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's okay. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. I can choose to hire the benefactor. Yeah, benefactor. That's cool. That's cool. The benefactor is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's when I thought you were going to hire, and then I'm, I forgot about the artisan. Yeah, I'm definitely going to hire the benefactor. It's two silver. And they gave me two merchant symbols, and immediately I gain uh, a benefit of moving uh, the virtue uh, tracker over one. And so when I play the benefactor, for every two merchant symbols I have on my board, I can actually use them as a noble symbol instead. So that's going to help me get into the castle more. Monique's all about the castle. I love game. the castle. <laughs> She's all about it. The castle needs people to work, right? So. Yeah. Just helping out. Well, we have a smash. Well, yes, we have a collision. Well, first of all, I get to activate Ada again. Oh, yeah, again. you don't take that. So I'm, it lets me move my whole stack over to the left for one virtue, and I gain a resource. Let's take another stone. <laughs> We're going stone heavy right now. And uh, now I get whatever is at the top here, which is two silver. One deed and one debt. One, yes, one deed and one debt. That's not bad. And Naveen gets to rearrange, rearrange. his player board. So yeah, you know are what? You I going to? Yeah, I think I want this thief to stick around just a little bit longer, and I will move Bertha down. I don't know if this is smart, <laughs> but let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, because I hired somebody, I'm technically allowed to discard a card. Yes, that's right. So I think I will. I'm gonna discard that Abbot. Ooh. And now I will put these back, reset these tokens, and draw up to a hand of four. So one, two, three. Oops. Four. Done. Yes. Back to you. Okay, so Squire goes out, no benefit. Uh, Bertha and Thief slide over. Okay, I'm going to play my Journeyman. He's back. Uh, gives me two of those uh, trade symbols. Uh, I'm going to move my Merchant. I'm sorry, not my Merchant. My Viscount <laughs> twice. So I'm going to move one, two. Okay. So I could. Te I technically have one, two, three, four inkwells. Oh, I'm sorry, four bags, which can be converted to inkwells. You're going to dismiss the Aristocrat for a fifth? bag no that's too expensive so i'm even though i put merchant bags out there and this is nice for manuscripts getting those inkwells i'm actually going to spend uh, or just represent this wild as a hammer or a building oh you're building yeah so i'm going to build here which allows me to flip so it's going to be one two plus that one is three okay and uh, i will do you know what let's let's do this i'm going to go for the one where uh, i can discard um if Whenever I, you hire. hire. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to cover up this flip right there. And so I'm going to flip this deed. So now I have four of the five needed for that one tome. Wow. Uh, and anytime I flip over a deed, I get a resource of my choice. So I will take the inkwell that I would have gotten uh, by doing the trade action. Smart. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. 
so uh, now I just draw back up because I don't think I want to hire this person. Do you don't want to hire the aristocrat who gets you a noble symbol and a merchant symbol and lets you move your virtue over for the low, low price of okay. two silver. I mean, it's not bad and allows you to discard or trash a card, which gets you coins. That is a Which great... means you can get the money back that you spent. Okay, yeah, I will do it. So That is a fantastic card. Two, go out, hire. Because I hired, I directly get to move this over to the left. And it goes into my discard. And your now new ability for building the building lets you discard a card. Yes, it lets me discard a card. So, so I, yeah, no, I, I'm not gonna do that. I, I will, I will just drop the four. Okay. And be done. All right. So that's that. And uh, back to me. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to move the thief off my board. They get me one silver and a debt. <laughs> Lest we forget the debt. Yeah. Ooh, that's minus four points right now because uh -oh. I need to flip these. Uh, okay, and <laughs> yeah. so I move yes, these <laughs> over, and I'm going to play the Mason. Oh. So the Mason gives me an ongoing ability that lets me turn in two coin for one building symbol, which means I'm going to build. So I have to move one space with my Viscount, so that means I'm moving directly up here, sure. and I'm going to build a building. So right now I have one building symbol, I have this wild, so that's two. two. Three, four, five, six, and I'm going to spend. And there's no building symbol, unfortunately, on this no, card, so no. I'm going to build, spend the two coins that my mason allows me to spend. To make it seven. For that seven. Oh no. And I'm going to build one of these. Uh, this is not good. One of these four. The big of it, daddies, yeah. The these three ones. ones yeah. this, the ones in here. These are these are the ones that cost uh, seven. And they give you a permanent symbol of the one that you're going to. The noble Expose. symbol. Oh, you're going hard castle. I would like to go to the castle hard, yes. <laughs> yes. I would like to be aggressive with the castle. They need a lot of help. Sure. So I can either gain a virtue or a resource. Let's just... Go get yourself a gold. Let's get myself a gold. Yeah. Yeah, let's kind of get that going. And hmm. and also, it's also worth six points yeah. just for that one it, building. It, it's Yeah. And now I have three buildings towards the five? Towards the five buildings, yeah. Okay, so that's that, that's good. Uh, it is good. I think I'm going to skip out on hiring Vicar, and so I'm just going to end my turn by drawing a card. Okay, Bertha comes off. No benefit. Thief slides, journeyman slides, and now I will play... I'll play the Tinker. So my Tinker, which is the guard I just drew, no ongoing benefit. It's only when it comes off I get a stone, but yep. it moves my Viscount two spaces. It has a cross and a noble symbol on there. So my Viscount is going to move one and then the down arrow two here. Ooh, what are you going to do? And I am going to be using the cross symbol. So I have one, two. This inkwell will represent three. Okay. And so now I'm taking and writing this manuscript, which is going towards a set collection. I instantly get a deed. Nice. Which will be needed. If I can flip this deed, I will win that one tome right there. That, yeah. That would you... be nice. You're probably gonna do it. I'm trying. I only have two flip deeds. Yeah. So, and you have what are the colors? Blue and black. Blue and black. Okay. So I'm so working. If you just need, you just need one more blue. Or one more black. Or one more black to gain the cleric card. Yes. So, and those are for merchant symbols and additional. Oh gosh. <sighs> yeah. You're gonna get them. I want it. <laughs> Leave it for me, please. Well, I think they're yours. I don't have any manuscripts. Yes. So actually, going back to my turn, um, I would have actually spent the two coins or the two silver to to discard vicar so instead so, of instead of spending my inkwell, inkwell. yeah i'd rather have that because this thief is going bye bye soon so uh so this goes out because this gets kicked out i get to move my virtue over okay this gets out of the game i don't get the bond of benefits so now you cannot hire the debt collector now I, I cannot have any. exactly yeah Ooh, the debt collector is a cool card <laughs> yeah uh okay so i'm gonna go ahead and draw myself a card and, and ending your turn that's it yeah all right, back to me. What are we gonna do here? Okay, so Ada, Ada's done a lot for me. <laughs> Ada was it was a good card. She got shuffled around a yeah, couple times. Yeah, did. So then we're gonna move these down. Here, I'm gonna play the <laughs> artist. Okay. So the artist gets me a uh, noble icon, and I can uh, once per turn I can spend a gold to represent two noble icons instead of just one. So we're clearly going to be going to the castle. So I have to move my viscount three spaces. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Okay. Do I want to move an additional space? Let's do it. I'm gonna spend a, a coin to move an additional space over here. Okay. And um, I don't have, oh, I do have enough money to discard that card technically. Okay. I'm not gonna dismiss that card because it's gonna make me waste the gold if I do that. So then I'm gonna take the moving into the castle action. So I have one, two, three noble icons technically because I built that building. So two go in. And then I can discard this gold 
with my artist that gets me two additional noble icons. So I have a total of five. Yes, four or five. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I can put in three. Three workers are going to go oh, wow. into this first here, which would mean one will get bumped up to the front here and two will move over just like this. So I'm going to resolve this before I do this. So because I moved into the second tier, I get a coin, and this allows me to flip over a debt or a deed. So I'm going to flip over a debt. I'm just going to sacrifice that tome. Naveen's going to get it anyway. So let's flip this Because you debt. think the game's going to end on deeds. It could, because so Naveen's does, taking a bunch of deeds here, and so have I. Yep. So if it does, and I have the most flipped over debts, then I'll, I'll score those 12, the 12 points. points. Yeah. So I'm going to gain a resource for doing that, and I'm going to take a gold, gold since bag. I still have that artist out. <laughs> and because this caused another three did workers... Far, did you get your coin? I did, okay, yeah. Okay. I got my coin. Uh -huh. Thank you. And so now that I have another three workers in this tier, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a chain reaction. So one goes up, one moves over, and another one moves over. So I'm going to get a coin, and I can either take a gold or I can move one of my workers... Wow from one of these adjacent places over. So if you move yes. this one over or that one over, yeah. It'll happen again. So wherever you move it, no matter what, it gets pushed back because of the way it splits. So technically it doesn't matter. No, it does. Because if I move this over, then this area is going to have two. Yeah. If I move oh, that okay, over, yeah. this area is going to have two. So it depends right. on which benefit I care more about. So with that being said, I'm going to move this one over. Yeah, that makes sense. Which means I have another three here. One's going to move up. This will move over here and this will move back. Right. And so I have another second tier worker, get another coin. You're hitting that tome pretty hard. <laughs> I am. And now I get a stone and an inkwell. It's my only tome, so I should. Yeah, you should. Uh, and I believe that is it. And I'm looking around. There are no tiers that have four workers in it. So that's it for that. I can technically, now that I have this money, uh. <laughs> I can technically hire the gatekeeper. Oh, yes, we're going to. I'm going to hire the gatekeeper for oh. one coin. And uh, they're going to get me a noble symbol because I'm kind of going hard on the noble part. And so now I can rearrange my uh, assembly line here. And immediately when I play the gatekeeper, they either let me rearrange my assembly line or I can discard two cards. It's a great card. So you're keeping the squire in or is it? Yeah. Yep. yep. We're moving the squire in so I can have both of these for one more turn and the mason <sighs> will go out. Wow. Because I hired the townsfolk, I get to discard a card. I'm going to discard my financer. And that's it. I draw back up to, I draw back up to four. So I didn't have enough cards. I have to reshuffle this. I don't have a criminal on my board, which means I get to move my virtue marker over one and four. That's me. Back to you. Okay, back to me. Okay, thief comes off. That means I take a debt, which is kind of good because that changes the clock a little bit here. <laughs> changes the course. Yeah. So I took a debt, uh, and I also get a coin, which is nice. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh huh. So the journeyman's going to slide over. Same with the tinker. And uh, let's go ahead and hit it hard right now while I can. I'm going to play the abbot. Okay. So the abbot means I get to move two. I'm going to move one, two, right over here. And so I have two cross symbols. This inkwell is going to represent the third one. Mm -hmm. So that I'm going to take that manuscript right there, which gets me a resource of my choice. Nice. And so now I have three towards the full set collection. Uh, ooh, what do I want out of that? Let's go hard inkwell. <laughs> okay. Let's just go. I need to get a manuscript. Let's do it. That That is, uh, yeah. That's uh, a good point. Yeah. And I was not going to, I'm not going to hire anybody because I only have one coin. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to boot anybody. So I'll just draw back up. All right, so back to me. I'm kind of getting nervous. I have done a lot in the castle, but I haven't really done anything else anywhere else. I just, you you go get your 70 points in the castle. I'll try to pick up points over the way. You're not going to go into the castle? I will go into the castle probably. I don't I have, think you I can neglect the gold. castle. I don't think you can either. Yeah. Plus there's all those bonuses when you go places. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so my mason moves off, and then all these move down. I'm going to play the abbot. Okay. So the abbot is just one of those, uh, just the cross symbol, yep. but uh, I'm actually not going to take a cross action. I'm just kind of doing that card for a setup for maybe a future turn. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to move my Viscount over twice. One, two. And I am going to spend a silver to move one additional space, okay. move into here. And we are going to take our, uh, one of our last, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> one of our last castle actions for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I have... Get those out of here. <laughs> I have one... Two, three noble symbols, four, and five. this gold is going to be uh, four or five. So I'm going to put another three workers into this section here. And so it's going to let me move one forward, gaining me a silver. So I'm going to take that now. And then one to the left, one to the right. This spot says I could move my virtue marker twice. One, two. And 
That's it. I think, yeah, nothing else happens in the castle. Okay. And so I could technically hire the scoundrel for one coin. For the which coin I you gain. I will. Yeah. yeah, you gain the coin, so you might as well. Yeah. They are criminal, but they will gain me a gold immediately when I play them. So that's nice. And they allow me to discard a card. So I can discard twice because of that ability. I'm going to discard this one. Yeah. Let's do both of these. Two cards from my hand, and that's it. So I'm going to draw back up to four. All right. So that is that. That is that, I'm huh? I'm really happy with the cards that I drew, but... I think it comes to a point in the game where you're like, merchant symbols. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with these, these bags. Uh, yeah, that's true. Because once you have your economy kind of going. Okay. Yeah. So Journeyman comes off. This allows me to move my virtue and hire somebody for free. So I think I'm going to hire this Acolyte, the one that Monique just exposed. So the benefit is I get to discard a card from my hand or I can top deck. If, if I knew all my cards and I knew what this was, the one last card. You mean you don't? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't card I, count? Didn't I, mean, I mean, I don't. So this goes into my discard. You gonna discard something? I think so, but who? All right, I'm gonna top deck it. I don't know what it is. Oh, good, it's a traitor. Yes. You okay with that? I am okay with this. The traitor was not planning on being used. So. That's always nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Woo, got lucky there. Okay, so now this will slide down. This will slide down as well. And I'm going to spend my lender my lender's coming out playing your lender playing my lender so the lender gets me uh, a benefit when it comes off it mm -hmm. allows me to do a free flip um it gets me two of those merchant bags but i just need the one movement and so i'm gonna move here stay on the inside track do another manuscript because i have one two plus one inkwell that's three that's what the cost is here so this allows me to hire anybody on the board for free. And it's a blue manuscript. Is that the is that the last color the, that you need? Well, because of my ongoing Oh, you're going to have tone, two of the same color. I have two of the same color. So this one as an individual, it'll start a new set mm -hmm. for set collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, um, I get to collect this card right here. Well, go ahead and do the benefit yeah. first before we forget. So I think I'm going to hire this antagonist here. Oh, wow. So it's, it's two criminal symbols, but hey, might as well, right? So I'm going to hire them. <laughs> That's a silly uh, card. This is going to move over, and uh, when I play them, I will take a debt. Okay. But it's two skull symbols, which is great. That's too wild. Yeah, too that is wild, nice. Yeah. So I'll take really that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now uh, because I have the, the cleric bonus card is what I'm going to get. Uh, because the blue ribbon, I take this one. So now I have a permanent two money bags in play, and this card is worth three points at the end of the game. Yeah, now technically you need to have three of the same color to take that, but because of Naveen's tome, he's a special one. The tome, <laughs> yes, the tome of the tome saga. So uh, I have four manuscripts. Again, one of the, the tomes uh, says you need six manuscripts. Okay. And you collect Almost it. there. Almost there. So six there. manuscripts, five buildings, or five deeds. That's right, yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, I am going to now need to... I'm not going to hire anybody uh, because I don't have the cash to do so. Okay. So I'm going to shuffle my deck because I have no criminals on board. Mm -hmm. uh, my white virtue is going to slide to the left. All right. Now I'm officially done. All right. So Ooh. back to me. Did you like something? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, what's going on over there? Okay. So I move off the squire. These all move down. And I'm going to play the Gatekeeper. I know I said that that was the last time I was going to the oh, castle oh, for a yeah. while. I think I lied. Okay. So the Gatekeeper gets me a merchant and a noble symbol immediately. I can rearrange these folks, or I can discard two cards from my hand. Mm -hmm. I think I will rearrange... Let's move the... Oh, well... <laughs> all right, I'm going to discard two cards from my hand. Let's just do that. I won't rearrange the, the cards in front of me. Sure. So now I'm required to move one space. I'm just going to move one over to that spot right there. And now I'm going to move into the castle again. So I have one, two, three noble symbols, which means I can only put two workers this time, which is fine because I still have one left over in that uh, tier. So I'm going to put these two in here. One is going to go uh, forward one, and one's going to go to the left, wow. one to the right. I gain a coin because it goes to the second tier. And I also get a stone and an inkwell. Okay. So... It's really time for me to start gaining these manuscripts. But we're not done because there's three here now. So this is going to move forward. One, this goes to the left. This goes back to the right. And I gain another coin for going to the second tier, as well as the ability to flip over a debt or a deed. Mm. So I have two debts. Let's just flip the third debt. Yeah. And that gets me another resource. So I'm going to get... Whole thing. I'm taking a stone. 
Let's see if we can try to build some more buildings. There is a tome after all. And now that we're done with the whole first tier, we're gonna move to the second tier. I have three workers here now, which means one goes into the center, gaining me a resource. And so I'm going to take another stone, stone yeah. as well as the castle card. Yes, you do have the castle card. I have the most ah. number of workers right now in the me middle here. If Naveen can uh, override that, then he can take this. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's going to get me five points at the end of the game. Plus, I have an additional uh, mm. hand size. You got to get in on this castle, Naveen. I, this is a sea of blue. I don't, I, you know, I'm hanging on to this gold. Don't, don't, <laughs> maybe I'll get in there. Maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Done? So, uh, well, oh, I can more? potentially hire this person, uh, yeah. the meddler. And I move the, eh, it gets me. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to hire the meddler. Two coins. And uh, they are a criminal. So I move so get, my. Oh, you don't get anything yet. Yeah. No, the, the immediate benefit is I move my corruption token over one. Sure. And. That's because it. I hired somebody, I could discard a card, but I kind of like the card in my hand. And I'm worried oh, because about of your gatekeeper. Yeah. what I would be discarding there. So let's just not. Okay. So now I'm going to draw up to five now. Yes. One, one because the building exposed it, and then one because she has a card for being king of the hill in the in the castle. So yes. king of the castle. <laughs> <laughs> so before we continue, shall we get a count on the deaths and deeds? Sure, let's do it. So deeds, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven deeds. Okay. And debts, I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, all right. Eight, nine. So it's not as close as, uh, or it's not as wide as we thought. Yeah, it's, it's still anyone's, uh, it's still, it still can go either way. Let's go. Let's, let's make this thing impoverished. <laughs> well, you and I are both going to have a collision soon. So. Yes. All right, back to you. Okay, Tinker, no matter what comes off, uh, because they come off, I gain a stone. Can I have a stone, yep. please? Uh, Abbott will slide. This will slide. And I believe I'm going to play my financier. So my financier is one money bag, three movement. Uh huh. I have the ability to discard a card. And two coins and two immediately. Coins. So I don't have to take the discard, but I will take the two coins. Let me look at my hand real quick. There was a thought I had. Yeah, there are only a couple of actions that are that are um, Not optional, yeah. and discarding is one of them. Discard that, and destroying. And destroying, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I, I don't think I will. I think I will hang on to what I have here. Okay. And so now I have three movement points. So it's going to go one, two, three. All right. So I have one, two, three, but let's not forget four, <laughs> five. Wow. Plus one is going to be six. Six merchant symbols, technically. Yes. So, so or you know what? Let me actually, let me take that back. Okay. I'm going to, instead of spending one, I'm going to spend two to use this wild of the debt collector. Oh, okay. So I'm going to force a smash by doing that, right? So so you're, you're dismissing this card. Correct. And so that'll still get you the one, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six symbols. And yeah, and it moves over your corruption marker. Okay. Causes a smash up. So then this card goes out of the game. Out of the game. And uh, you get, you have six symbols and it's every two symbols is this one stone. So three stones. Three stone, yep. One, two, three. There you go. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, so now we have... Um, so you can hire. I could hire. A swindler. Uh, no, I only have one coin. Oh, you can't hire. Yep. <laughs> so we are going to have a smash. So uh, do you have any ongoing smash? No, I don't have any collision, collision benefits. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, know. <laughs> I don't have a smash. All right. So uh, I gain one coin and a deed, All right, which there is you go. part of the clock that we're talking about, which is not good because you have more debts flipped. But yeah, what are you doing? That's okay. Uh, do you have any criminals? I have no criminals. Okay, so then nothing happens in the bottom row for Monique. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. That's unfortunate. <laughs> so these go back to where they belong. And I believe that is that. So I will draw one card. Okay. Cool. So back to me. Yeah. This is getting uh, This is getting kind of intense because we are... That clock is ticking. We're more than halfway through. And yeah. that can like end really quickly depending on what people do. So It can. Shoot. <sighs> Okay, so the artist leaves, and uh, so now my golds are now worth one each again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play the thief. This is a criminal card. So this is going to move down one, because I have one criminal symbol showing. Sure. And now we move. So I'm going to move my Viscount over one space right into here. And this time, we're going to take a manuscript action. Nice. So I have one, two... I could technically dismiss that. Uh, cost three. Missionary, it's expensive, so, so I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one, two, and this costs five, so I have to spend three, four, five. Okay. Three, four, five. So this is an end of game benefit. 
what yes. money's gonna get. This is one point for every builder symbol that I have on my cards at the end of the game. I don't actually know how many, this might not have been the best move, but <laughs> I'm gonna just maybe try to get more building symbols since I have that manuscript. Sure. And that's it, I cannot hire. hire. And so I'm just going to redraw my hand. Okay, my turn? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna move the abbot over. Uh, Lender's coming closer to the edge. I need you to, to bump off, Lender. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna play that antagonist. I happen to draw them. Okay. Yeah, so right away I gain a debt. That's what it makes me do. So this is not good. This little debt to deed ratio here. <laughs> yeah, that's minus six points. very good. And you bumped your marker, by the way. Uh, yes, well, I need to bump it. So uh, there's two symbols showing, so I believe this moves over one, two. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna move one, two, three into here. Okay. And I think I'm gonna complete my set collection, so uh, it, one, two will represent the uh, crosses I need. Okay, so you're writing a manuscript? Yeah, one, two, and then the ink well will be three. Perfect. So this comes out. So now this one is it allows me to move my virtue over, and okay. it's my fifth manuscript, but it completes one full four set right here. I have one of each color, blue, black, yellow, and gray. Nice, that's gonna be worth 16 points. 16 points, the game. plus this one is another set one point, so 17 points. Nice. And then now any other manuscript I get, I can take one of these. Does that get you the tome? Uh, no, one short. It, it oh, requires six. six. Oh. But it's in my best interest to do it again because yeah. if I do it, I can take any one of these cards plus the tome. Oh my gosh. Read. You are set up to take two of those tomes. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I need to build the buildings. <laughs> Go away. Oh yeah. my gosh. So <laughs> that's how I played all, you know, the first architects, I played it that way, and uh, and paladins still didn't work out for me. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, so uh, that is it. I get to draw up a card. There's no smash that happens there. <laughs> that's me. Okay, let's bump off the abbot, moving the gatekeeper and the thief down. And I'm going to play Ada again because it looks like I'm going to have a collision uh, very soon now, actually, because since Ada is a criminal, I'm going to move uh, for each criminal symbol. So it's one, two. Yes. And so there is going to be a collision at the end of my turn. Okay. And so Ada requires me to move two spaces. Ooh, this is a nice spot. It's going to gain me two benefits. Yeah. Let's do it. So I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to play, I'm going to build a build. building. I could technically spend two coins to kick, to dismiss the traitor for another symbol. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, ooh. Now, if you do that, it, the benefit is to reshuffle. You you must reshuffle, and because you have criminals, it'll slide you over to the right a little bit. Two debts, Gain, gains me three coins. Gains you three coins, which is nice, yeah. Let's do it. I'm gonna spend the two coins to dismiss the traitor. Okay. And so, yes, I have to reshuffle my deck. deck. And it is going to gain me an additional symbol. So I'm just going to put that here for now. And because I am reshuffling my deck with, while with I have criminals, criminals on board, mm -hmm. it gets me a corruption. That's, that's fine. Okay. So then I'm going to build a building. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, so wow. I'm discarding all four of my stone to put another one of these high powered buildings out. And I think I'm going to do this one so that I have an additional, I have a constant builder symbol all the time. Yep. And I'm gonna place it here. So this spot allows me to destroy a card. And in destroying the card, I get to take the money cost. One, two, or three, yeah. So you know what? Let's just discard this finance here. I've yeah. been discarding her every single time. So let's just destroy them now. So this is gonna go out of my hand for the rest of the game. And I gain three silver for doing so. One, mm -hmm. two, three. Which is great because when you play the finance here, you get two coins. So now yeah. it's not clogging up your deck and you got one more than playing it. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's nice. And because I built a building in this nice spot, it's going to gain me and both of us an inkwell. I'll take it. Because that's that linking bonus. I will definitely take it. So that's for you. And it lets me, uh, it gives me one lateral movement of a, uh, a worker that's in the first tier of the castle. So even though I'm here twice, I still only get to do it once. Sure. So, ooh, we have options. I can either move this into here or this into here. It depends on what I want. I really don't want to gain virtue because I want to take these two debts, oh, seeing yeah. as there's uh, there are more debts in that pile. So I'm really trying to not activate this. So what right. I think I'll do is I'll move this into here, and that way I can do this, yep. and I'll have two and two on these sides. For the future, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that there's three in here, I move one up this way, one goes to the right, one goes back to the left. I gain a silver for being in that second tier, and then mm -hmm. I gain the benefit of taking a uh, hiring a townsfolk for free 
This tinker has a builder symbol. But it would move your virtue, which you're trying to avoid. I mean, I'm going to take the tinker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I still want that point sure. for the building uh, symbol. It's going to move me over one spot, and that goes into my discard. So that's it for that. I can now technically hire this overseer for two coins, and it'll gain me another movement over. Mm. Uh, eight is already going to move me yeah, one over. Yeah, eight is already moving you over. I'm not going to hire yeah. that person. So I will discard this card. And now I am going to have a collision. So do you have any collision benefits? Uh, no, but I do have uh, skulls showing. So Okay. Ahead. So Ada allows me to move my stack over to the left, getting me one virtue, and I gain a resource. Let's take a stone. I gain two silver and one debt and one deed. So one of each. One debt, one deed. Okay. One debt, one deed, and Naveen gets to, you get to rearrange your cards. So I kind of like the lender right where it is because at the beginning of my turn, I get to, I basically get a tome. So I think I'm going to leave it. I like my antagonist as far back as possible. So no I, benefit. I'm not going to take it. No. Nope. Okay. Best case scenario. <laughs> All right. So these go back and that's it. I'm going to drop my hand. Three, four, five. Back to you. Okay. Uh, it is my turn. Lender comes off. Because the lender comes off, it gets me a free flip. We are going to flip a deed. Finally! So we have five deeds flipped. So let's do this first. Because I flipped a deed, I get a resource, resource. of my choice. I will take I'll take a gold. Gold? Let's do a gold, yeah. There you go. There we go. So that's a gold for you. What else? Um, oh, oh, there's more? Your tome. Yeah. Oh, yes, my tome. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's a one, two, three, four, five. Five deeds have been flipped. So I get this tome right here. Nice. I'm excited. Well, I have a tome, so now the tome count is uh, seven six yes. technically, with Closing no the gap. with no uh, ideas to how the final scoring is going to be. Congratulations! Uh, <laughs> and Naveen is you. thrilled. I am thrilled. I haven't even played a card yet, so I will play the princess. Ah, oh, remember this princess virtuous. right here? Yeah. Yes. So she is going to slide me over one. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I get to two, move two, so I'm going to go one two mm -hmm. and then now i have one two three four five. Oh, you're going so into five. the castle yeah we're gonna go in the castle okay so five so uh we can go ahead and just one is going to go up and then two are going to split out so one up so three people into the castle yes exactly for five right mm -hmm. and then split split okay so now i get the reward that's here so i get a free flip i think i'm gonna flip over that debt time now okay so i'm gonna move that over and then i will take a stone please all right there you go all right and then uh so now we assess um if there's four or more yep. so there is four more here so i'm gonna boot monique you're booting me i'm booting you so you're getting two coins for that yes. because it's a first tier boot and then i'm also gonna boot you out of this second tier here. okay so that's gonna gain me uh, one virtue bump and a resource. And a resource, yeah. So I'm going to take a stone. Uh, I don't have enough money to hire that missionary, unfortunately, so uh, that is going to be it for me. Okay. So I'm going to draw my hand. Nice. So I've been booted twice, which is not bad. I guess the, the benefits of getting booted to the castle are pretty useful. They're useful, yeah. Yeah. You got a bunch of money. I did. You can basically go anywhere on the board now with all that money. Hmm. All right, so Gatekeeper goes off, and Finally. I'm going to play another criminal, <gasps> just like all criminals. So you move three over to the right. Yes, this is my Swindler, so it's going to go one, two, three. I'm Whoa. really just trying to make another collision happen. <laughs> oh, so Ada can uh, can do her thing. Yeah, and just also because I get more debt, which I need to start flipping. So yes. anyway, the Swindler is going to get me two stone when they get kicked off, but I have to move three spaces, mm -hmm. and I think this time I'm going to go one... Two, three. Okay. And I'm going to go into the castle again. Oh, nice. So this is going to be... Causing it, yeah. One, two, three, four. I'm one short of putting three workers. So I can only put in two. Okay, which is good and, Which is fine because it's going to go into here. I have at least three. So one goes forward, one to the left, and one oh, to... Oh, am I going to get booted? <laughs> the right. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll I... see. Uh, I get a coin for going to the second tier. And then this benefit says I can go two virtue bumps. Double virtue. One, two. So I'm going to have a collision. <gasps> And what else do we want to do here? I think that's it. I think okay. the only other thing I can do is I have to kick somebody off right there. Do yep. I give Naveen two coins? Well, I have so much money. Yeah, let's do it. I'm booting you. So I get two coins. You get two coins. Two coins for a point. Okay. And that's because there were four people yep. in that spot. I'll take the coins. Uh, okay. So I did my action. I can technically hire. Oh, I could have. I could have. Uh, no, I couldn't have. No, it's, <laughs> it's the wrong symbol. Yeah. Oh, that person gets me a debt. 
No, the thief is going to get me a debt already. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And uh, I have to resolve my collision. So any collision benefits? No. Okay, so Ada is here again, which means I get to move this over to the left. And I gain a resource. I'm going to take a stone. And so now I gain one silver and a deed. Can I have a deed, please? A deed. They're still worth one point, even though they I'm are. taking deeds. It's still worth one point, and it's still kind of ticking away so that my poverty win could be can happen. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, possibly. Uh, do you have at least one criminal I on board? I do, yeah. So, this so you is have to move. slide over. Yeah. That's that. So this gets reset. And I'm going to redraw my hand back up to five. Back to you. Okay, so the financier comes off the board. No benefit there. Antagonist moves over. That one moves over. And so now I set this up so I can play my Acolyte. So my Acolyte gets me three movements. It's a cross and a merchant symbol. So okay. we're going to move three. We're going to go one, two, three. Monique, you get to re-do your hand. I can rearrange my, my uh, oh, let's just do this. I'm going to do this so that I can get the stone immediately. And Ada sticks around for a little while longer. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Especially because I'm probably going to have a smash. But we have some things to do here, Monique. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at that manuscript that costs four. So I have antagonist one, two, three, inkwell four. Okay. Okay, this manuscript says I get to place out this type of building immediately. What? Which is uh, great because that clears that whole thing out. That's nice. So this means I can place this one building out for free for any available slot, which is great because my stone is still available for, me <laughs> for the future. That's a great manuscript. I Plus, kind of snoozed on that. this manuscript does a lot more things. So let's do one thing at a time. Okay. Because there's a lot of things that are going to happen here. Okay. I snoozed. I'm excited. <laughs> I should have. You went there. I, I thought you were going to take it. I was like, it. don't take it. I was so. Uh, uh, you wow. were so focused. Well, I, I would like something that can get me a linking bonus. If, you know, if I go here, you I can get, get a, a debt. debt and a gold. And if gold you go one. here. You can move a uh, person over and you can start doing that train thing. Yeah, I think I will. So I will put it here. So yeah, I'm gonna trash this card. So that's gonna, the journeyman's out. Ah. He was great. I'm gonna put him here because he's, he's one of my starting cards. Okay, so two silver. Two silver. There you go. Okay, so that's that. Uh, because I created a link here, I get to do uh, one of these. Um, first tier first tier workers. Gets a move, yeah. So I'm gonna move this one over here. Okay. Causing a three, meaning this one's going to go right back to where it came. Uh huh. This one will come here, and this one will elevate up. Uh, so my benefit here is either gold or move again. I'm going to take a gold. Okay, there you okay. go. Thank you. Since I have this princess out here, maybe I can work it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, now I took this manuscript. Now, because I have two of these in my tome, says for every two, I get one of these bonuses. I get the gray cleric bonus card, which is a permanent builder. Uh, bu builder. Nice. Plus it's uh, three points at the end of the game. So I get these two. Now yes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, which was a tome. Naveen is cleaning up the tomes. <laughs> but shall we go a little further, Monique? What? We have one, two, three, four. <gasps> Red crest symbols. I've been eyeing this since game two. Do you get those immediately? I would imagine it's whoever gets it for symbols first, right? Oh my because gosh. How would we sort this out if not? Yeah. Oh, Naveen. So another tome. How many tomes are you at right now? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tomes. Oh, we're tied. We're tied. We're tied. This is bad. So. If you were, if that was kind of difficult to follow, Naveen was talking about the crests. Yes, the crests. In a two-player game, you need four crests four to crests. get one of those three crest tones. Yes. So as a consolation from the last game, I picked that red one, mm -hmm. knowing that I was closer to getting, or if I could get a red tome, mm -hmm. then I, I can score that one. So. Yeah, good choice. Ah, oh, thank you. That's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. Do so you feel relieved? I, I do. Now. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to keep that in a, in a big stack. I still think I remember all my stuff. So I'm full of regret. Uh, that is that. And then uh, let's get a debt to deed count because okay. it's important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven debts. Seven debts to one, two, three, four deeds. Oh, the game is over soon. Seven, four. Oh, wow. So if I take that debt, I'm going to want to get it and flip it. You know, I'll I I think I will take the debt. You are you're gonna you're gonna hire. I think so. The bishop. Uh, three you, silver. What do you think, Monique? Should I hire him? Ooh, I don't know. I can't tell. Like I have I have no idea. All right, <laughs> let's do it. I will I will take him. Yeah. All right, so three I'm, silver. Three silver. One, two, and three. So you gain a debt. I did. I gain a debt, which kind of balances out that clock because I have the most deeds flipped. 
So, and then now the bishop goes into your discard. Bishop goes into the discard, exactly. And that's it. You can technically discard a card if you'd like. I'm going to discard my lookout. I don't want this in my hand right now. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that was because I hired. So that that's that. So now I get to draw my three cards and I'm done. Ooh. All right. That was a lot. That was bad. A lot of stuff That going. was really, really bad. That, that was a tide changer. <laughs> we'll see. We'll Change see what we can make happen. Okay, I'm going to... Well, let's first kick off the Swindler. And the Swindler gets me two stone for kicking them off. Right there. This moves down. And I'm just going to play another criminal. We're going to continue to push the virtue track. So you move three to the right. track, I guess. Hard, yeah. It's going to go one, two, three. Now I have to move two spaces. Mm -hmm. Where am I? I'm here. Yeah, you're laying down there. Where do we go? I can go one, two. I'm going to spend a coin to move an additional space. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Ooh. Well, you know what? I didn't even have to spend a coin to do that. Because from here, I can go one, two. Yes. So I'm going to take yeah, my coin back. The arrow goes upwards, yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to build a building. And I have one, two, three wilds plus four because it's a permanent building symbol. Dang it. And I could spend a coin to discard the pickpocket for a fifth. And it'll let me discard a card to my hand. So let's do that. One coin to dismiss the pickpocket. So that's going to be an additional symbol. And I can discard a card. Let's discard the labor. Uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to put out my last. Nice. This is a town. Uh, seven building. And that's that. Now I now that I put all three of these out, it's going to be 21 points, points at the end of the game. So I'm going to place this right there. That's too good. It's going to give me a gold. And I also get two linking bonuses. Yes. You and I both collect the debt. Oh, wow. So this, the, wow, the clock might change differently here. I know. That was probably bad that it did that. But I also get to move up once on my virtue yes. track because of that benefit. Yes. Well, the, the deeds was the clock. Now it might be the debts. Yeah. Which is good for me because I have a bunch of flip deeds. The exact inverse. So. Hmm. That would be bad for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I think I'm going to hire the pastor just so I can have this immediate benefit of rearranging the cards. <laughs> is over Ada here. sticking around? Ada's sticking around. Ada's benefit is great. Uh, and I think I'm going to do the meddler first, just like that. All right. Wow. And because I hired, I can discard a Amazing. card from my hand. Sheesh. Right. Let's discard the journeyman, I guess. That's that. So I'm okay. going to draw back my hand. One, cool. two, three, four, five. Back to you. Okay. So the antagonist has to go. Uh, very well done, Antagonist. I really needed that. <laughs> that was a very good hire. Like, these are going to slide down. So uh, I will go ahead and play my squire okay. uh, down there. So I have two of those uh, noble symbols. Mm -hmm. So I get two movement. We're going to go one, two into this spot. And then I'm going to go one, two, three for the gold. Okay, you're going to yep. go into the castle? Uh, yeah, we're going to go into the castle. So that's going to be two pieces in the castle. Yep. So... It's going to basically, these two go out to the side, mm -hmm. and then I go up right here. So I'm going to resolve that first, which and is flip. Flipping over a debt or a deed? I'm going to flip over a uh, debt. To gain your resource? What In, resource? Uh, I'll take stone. Stone. Okay. There you go. Okay. And then, or you know what? No, I'll take, I'll take an inkwell. Sorry. Inkwell. Yeah, okay. Inkwell. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Okay. And then, uh, because I am here yep uh one goes up into the into the center center so you get a resource yeah. you don't get to take this card just no. yet you need a second one to do that right but you get a resource i'll take another uh inkwell okay there you go and now we have this area here that has four who are you gonna kick out uh i will kick you out me yeah <laughs> me Ugh. but you get a benefit i get two silver two silver so now i have a lot of money a lot of money what am i gonna do with that I don't know. <laughs> um, is there anything else to be done here? Would you like to hire the uh, missionary? No, I think I'll, I'll pass on that. Okay. Yep, just draw. Okay. Oh, you didn't move any of your virtue markers that time. Uh, no, no. Okay, Try go ahead and draw stick. back up. Yep, one card. Oh, and I just realized before I take my turn, I have built five buildings. I didn't get the tome. Oh, yeah, the tome, yeah. <laughs> the tome. Almost We forgot. totally talked about it, yeah. So now you have eight tomes to my seven. I still don't have enough of those crests. Oh, if I just take one more, if I get one more of those crests, I don't know. It's I don't, not in I don't there. think I'm going to get it. Yeah, eight to seven. This is a really yeah. close. The only way it would happen is if I got a major victory and then you as a consolation took this crest. But it still wouldn't be enough it, to yeah. win. So we're going to forego the crest yeah. idea then. Okay, so 
Meddler moves off. I get one, one debt and one. and one deed. Oh, man. So we know there's three deeds. You want to know how many debts are left? Yes. Three. It's three, three. Three, three. Are you kidding me? Three, three. Oh, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Woo. This ah. is stressful. <laughs> I mean, you got 21 points in... in uh, in building construction, that that was that was pretty good. Well, I'm thinking I need to build again. Okay, I'm gonna play the artisan. I'm gonna play the artisan that gets me a um, a building symbol, and I have to move three spaces. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Okay. And I'm gonna build a building. So I have one, two, three, four, and I could do five by discarding my stone. Yep. So I will do that. To put out one of these three, let's see, two merchant symbols I can dismiss for one coin or, oh, I can gain just an additional movement by not having to spend money. I'm going to do this one yep. because this allows me to dismiss just for one coin right. instead of whatever the real cost is. I'm going to place this here so I get a deed. Ah, <laughs> moving the deeds along, eh? That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't really do anything else. So just that. Good. Um, <laughs> oh, good. So I can hire the missionary. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to hire. I'm just going to leave it at that, and I just draw up an additional card. That was it. Real quick, okay. real easy. Real easy. Okay, Princess comes off. No benefit. Uh, Acolyte slides down. Squire slides down. Uh, I am going to play my Clergyman. Okay. The one I hired a long time ago. Uh, clergyman is uh, a cross or a money bag or a trade icon, and the ongoing benefit is I can spend two coins to represent a... Uh, a cross. Okay. So I have one movement, so I'm going to go one, pay one coin to get another movement, to go here, and I'm going to take this manuscript. Ooh. So it is going to be one, two, three. Nice. I really want it. I mean, yes, it's adding to set collection, but I really want it for a free flip. So I'm going to flip a debt. Okay. So let's go ahead and flip a debt. What resource would you like? Uh, I am thinking I'm probably going to want... Gold. Okay. Yeah, gold. There you go. Thank you. And so to finish my turn, I, I'm not gonna hire this out or hire, Yeah, no. So then I'm gonna draw. That's me. Well, we haven't had any collisions lately. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my thief goes off, and the thief gets me a debt, a debt and a silver. Excellent. Oh no! This is getting real bad, because I have I have three, four unflipped debts. So it's gonna be minus eight points at the end of the game if I don't do anything about it. So we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play the artist. Okay. Who lets me discard a gold She's for back. two noble symbols instead. Yeah, they are back. I'm gonna do something kind of wild. I'm gonna go oh. one, two, three. I need to basically get all the way around the board. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go one, two, three. I'm gonna spend three additional coins to get to where I'd like to be. So we're gonna go one, two, three. And I'm going to place workers into the castle. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Because of the artist. Because of the artisan, yeah. The oh, artist. artist, sorry. Yeah. So it's going to be three workers. And they're just going to go straight, one up into the second oh, tier, one no. to the right, one to the left. And then I gain a silver for that. And I get to flip over. I'm going to flip over a debt because these are worth... They're going to cost me too many points at the end there. So mm -hmm. I flip that over and I'm going to gain. Let's do a gold because I am worried about, well, yeah, let's do a gold. Now there are four here and four here. I'm just going to boot Naveen twice. So I get two coins. You get two silver. Uh, you actually get three silver, I think. Why is that? Because the second tier. Oh, no, no. no it's it's a, two it's, silver. Yep. It's one virtue over. One virtue, which is a smash. Which is going to cause a collision, collision, which is good for me. And um, a resource. I'll take gold. Okay. There you go. That's it for that. Do I want to hire this missionary? No. I said no to them last time, so I think I'm going to say no to them again. And I'm just going to draw a card. Back to you. So this occurred on my turn, the smash, so we don't resolve it yet. Yes. Okay. It happened. You resolve at the end of your turn. Yep, exactly. Cool. Okay. Acolyte comes off. Acolyte comes off. allows me to flip over a debt. Oh, no. Yes. You wanted the clock to run. Now we're tied. Now we're tied, yeah. Uh, uh, so I will take, as a resource, I'll take a gold. Okay. Let me slide that down. There you go. Okay, I'm going to play Bertha here. So Bertha is a noble symbol and a merchant bag. Uh, the instant bonus is I get to move my... Um, Your virtue? My virtue over. Okay. Or I can move somebody on the on the one tier. 
So I'm actually going to use the benefit of moving something over. I'm going to move my worker from here over there. Okay. Okay. And then Bertha allows me to do, because I don't, I don't want to collect more deeds here because I have the most deeds here. Mm -hmm. So I want the timer to be debt, mm -hmm. even though I'm doing okay in debt as well. But I'd like to have my hand in both. Okay. Okay. So um, I will be moving one, two, three. Monique, you get to rearrange. Ooh. You have not returned this favor to me too much. <laughs> I'm going to move the artisan over so that I can uh, gain that yep. flippy benefit. ASAP, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, because I'm here, um, I'm going to be taking the action of going into the castle. I have one, two, one, two, three. And I'm going to hang on to these two gold here for maybe for a later time. Okay. You so, don't want to put in three workers? No, I think I'm going to I'm gonna hold off. So then I bring in two workers. Uh-huh. These two will technically start here, but then they'll they'll boot out to the sides. Uh-huh. And then this one will elevate into this section here. Oh. Oh. It's very tidy. Here we go. I'll do it. It's if you want to flip over. Yes. I will flip over a debt. Oh, no. What resource would you like? Uh, I'll take gold. All right. There you go. I love gold. All right. <laughs> And now we have a few tiers here yes. that have at least four workers. So who are you bumping? Okay, so I'm going to bump you out of here. So okay. you get two coins. Yep. Many coins to you. Yeah, I know. I'll just bump you out. There you go. Okay, so I get a one virtue mm -hmm. bump and a resource. And a resource, yeah. So let's just take them as well. All right. Cool. Um, and I think that is it. Are I'm you not going to hire no. the missionary now? No. No. Okay, I'm going to drop to my five. Well, no, you have a collision. Oh, yes, yes, I have a collision. So, uh, because we're here, uh, Monique, you get the reshuffle again. Well, yeah. <laughs> first things first, Yeah. you have this unveiled. Do you have any criminals? I do not have any criminals. So this gets you a virtue bump. So, uh, because I have no criminals, this is going to force this whole thing to move to here. Left. <laughs> yes. Okay. Unfortunate. So, um, that means I'm going to take debt. Uh, not debt, I'm going to take this clock, which I don't really care for. Oh, so, the game's about to end. Uh, soon, yeah. I, I get a coin and a deed, which yep. I guess is worth one point. Yep. Uh, and Monique, you have to move your criminal over. Well, it's a, because you had a collision, I'm actually supposed to do this first. Okay, sure. And uh, it says I can move my virtue up one and I gain a resource. Mm -hmm. So let's just gain another gold, I suppose. Sure. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing anymore. <laughs> um, and then now, because I have a criminal on my board, it's it down to the right. one. Yeah. All right. Amazing. <laughs> that was intense. Uh, so then you reset your your virtue track. I do, which I don't think will come into play. And redraw. Redraw. Yes. So I will draw my one card. Okay. Cool. All right. How many how many deeds are left? There's a deed, and there's two, two debts. debts. This is pretty much. So I have probably... five debts flipped and five deeds flipped. I imagine that this is going to be your last turn after my turn. So probably it's get smashed. Turns. So yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah. Depends on where you move it. So first things first, uh, the artisan comes off, and I can flip over a debt or a deed. Let's so flip. now we're tied on debts. This I'm gonna is... flip this debt. Oh, man. And it's too tight. I'm gonna gain a gold. Move these down. What are we gonna do? Ah, oh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna keep on pushing that button because I don't see any other way to flip. Sure. Deeds and debts, and I'm kind of like uh, single-minded right now. So I'm going to do it. I'm playing my squire, and it's going to require me to move two spaces. I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to spend the one, two, three in coins <laughs> since I have so much silver right now. And you get to rearrange your your board because oh, I, I landed do, huh? on the same spot as okay. you. Okay, yeah, then I'll keep my squire in play. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, and one gold. Ah, oh, that's a waste. Ah, oh, that's a waste. Oh, well. So I'm spending my gold for the fifth uh, worker, or the fifth uh, noble symbol. I'm going to place three workers into here. One goes here, one here, and one up here. Getting me a silver. Let's me flip over a... I'm going to do a debt. And I'm going to take another gold. I'm just going to go gold heavy here. Okay. And I have another three over here. So this is going to move forward one. This moves to the right. This moves to the left. And I gain a silver for that. And I can either move people over again or take a gold mm. so i'm gonna move this one over here which it's which gives me another three so i'm gonna move this to the right this to the left this to the center give me another silver oh gosh i wish silver was points and I'm this so glad it's not gets me a stone and an inkwell 
And so that's it for the first tier. Moving on to the second tier, we have three here. So this is just going to move to the middle, mm -hmm. um, gaining me a resource. So I think I'll just take a, I don't know, let's take a stone. Now we have to bump people off because there are four in this spot here. So let's bump Naveen off. So Naveen gets one virtue bump. One virtue bump. And so a resource. And a resource. Yeah. I'll take gold as my resource. The bump resource. Gold? Oh, okay. there you go. You know what? I am going to hire that worker because they let me discard cards from my hand. And if I'm going to only have one turn left, I might as well do this. So I'm spending one, two, one, two, three. Uh, to hire this worker, I can discard one card from my hand and an additional one because of that. Mm -hmm. So let's do these two. Maybe you can draw something really nice. That's my that's my hope. Yeah, yeah. And now I have a collision. So I did not build that. You you did. Do you have any criminals on your board? I don't. So you can move your virtue marker over. Okay. Uh, I do have Ada, who's been here for years, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this get this means I can move this over. I also gain a resource. Gosh, I have two. I have so many resources. It's just there. I don't know what to take anymore. Uh, and now I gain two silver, one debt and one deed, which triggers the end of the game. Does trigger it. So that's the last deed. And you take a debt, though. So that's something. If we clear out both by the end of the game, then technically both will score. That's true. And you can rearrange your board. Uh, well, I already did it from the previous thing that you did. Well, that's it. So, oh, and I have to reshuffle. And I have one criminal here, which means I move that down. All right, Naveen, final turn. All right, so the clergyman comes off. Squire is going to slide down, and Bertha is going to slide down. <laughs> You're sounding not so excited about this. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not, because I'm going to be one gold short. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, maybe you can dismiss. So I'm going to play my aristocrat here. Okay. Uh, immediately I can trash a card or, or discard, discard a one, card. Which doesn't really matter Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll trash this laborer for two coins, please. So it goes out of the game? Out of the game, yes, you're right. So there's your two coins. Okay. And so uh, now I have one, two, three nobles yep. showing. Okay, so I'm going to move one, two, and then I'm going to spend three, two gold Okay. to go here to the diplomat. All right. And I'm going to discard the diplomat using their uh, little noble symbol here. So okay. it's going to cost me one to discard. Uh huh. So this one goes out. Uh, it allows me to rearrange my cards. It's the end of the game. So I'm, we can just forgo that right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now I have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, you're putting out four. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to get in there. That was a big push. So, all right, this is, I always get a little confused here. So here, let me help you. Yeah, help so go ahead and here. put, so four, you had two of them already in there. Yeah, and then two more going. So you have six total. So one moves over, one moves over this way, one yeah. moves into the middle. So would you like a stone? <laughs> yeah, I guess I get a little. Stone and claw, there you yeah. go. And then you do it again, because there's still three here. So one moves into here, one moves into here, and another. So another stone and inkwell, stone and inkwell, which is not really useful, but I get points for just being there. Okay. Uh, there's also there's four in here now. Who are you bumping? I'll bump you. Of course. Dang it. Because <laughs> I don't need I don't need silver. And up here. I'll bump you. All right. <laughs> so one virtue and a resource. Ah, I hate these resources now. That's it. That's. Are you going to hire this person um, for a virtue bump? I don't. We'll just we'll just call it that. All right. That's my game. <laughs> Are you happy with it? Uh, you know what? Um, I think I'm technically supposed to draw up, and because I have no criminals, this is supposed to go virtue here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. So. I will hire that person. Oh. I will hire that person because it causes me to move one more time, just for fun. Just like, for, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like, am I missing something? No. Is something gonna happen here? Okay. So that's so, it. So back to me for the final turn. I'm gonna kick Ada off. Ada has been with me for so long. So long, yeah. And, well, how many deeds do you have, or deaths do you have flipped? One, two, three, four, five? Yeah. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So I just need to not take that debt. Take the debt, Monique. All right, I'm going to play my artisan. And uh, so I have to move three spaces. I'm going to go one, two, three. Sorry, I'm going to spend one more coin to move an additional space. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, build a building right there. Okay. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So three stone to put out this building. 
And I'm going to place it right there. So that gets me a deed. It's going to just come from the supply. It's yep. just an additional point. One point. And I believe that's it. I could technically hire this person, but if I do that, then it's going to make me take that last <laughs> debt. Do it. Which would be bad for me, so I'm not going to do that. Dang it. Um, but and that's it. I redraw. And that you is do. the end of the game. The game. <sighs> All three tomes stand. were collected. Yeah. The final game in the tome saga has ended. Yeah. We're going to go into final scoring. Mm. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I don't know yeah, where I'm at. Really I, hard to tell. This is not good. So you built we, a lot of buildings. We have our handy dandy uh, Garp Garp Hill app. This yes. Really, really fantastic app for scoring, by the way. And uh, we are ready to begin. So let's start with constructed buildings. So I did not change the name he, names here. You're going to be Caroline, and I'm going to be Gisela. Sure, since I'm uh, first player. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So uh, how many points do you have for constructed buildings? Uh, nine. So just those three. Just those three. Yeah. Perfect. So nine. And then I have, let's say I built two of these, which is five, three of these, which is 21, so 26, and then two of these, which is an additional nine. 35. 35. So you got a lot of points in buildings and in the in the castle. In, in buildings. We'll see about the castle. Well, we're going to find out now. Okay. So we're going to do points equal to wherever you are on the castle. So I'll just start plucking. Sure. So I'm one, two, three, uh-huh. Four, five, and six on the bottom. Six on the bottom because it is uh, one point, two point, three six, points. Yeah. And then two, four, six, eight. So, so that's 14. 14, 15, 16, 17 points. All right. Yeesh. So 17 in the castle. Um, I have one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 18 plus four, 22. 22. Plus six, 28. 28 yeah. Ooh. Two, 28, but I think that's where a majority of my points came from. Uh, transcribed manuscripts. So this is where Naveen Maybe. is going to rock it. So I got uh, one full set for 16, mm -hmm. another uh, half set for another four, so that's 20, and plus one is 21. Nice, 21. I have one. My alone manuscript. One. Uh, and you're supposed to also score the bonus victory points on specific manuscripts. Mine gets me one point per builder symbol, and I believe that's on cards and on your board. So mm -hmm. I have one builder symbol right there. And so let's just take a look at these. One, two, five. Ooh. So that's wow. five, five plus plus the one point for having the manuscript. So six points total. Castle leader and the cleric bonus card. So I have the castle leader card, which so is five points for me, and I have no no cleric bonuses. So uh, I have two cleric bonus cards. So, so six, six points. Yeah. Then we have unpaid debts. I zero. have two of them. None. Yeah, Naveen has zero. So I have minus four points for that. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. And then uh, acquired and approved deeds. Qu approved, yeah. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, 15, 16, 17 points. Ooh, 17. I have uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we do the poverty or prosperity card, depending on which one was revealed. Mm -hmm. So the poverty card was not revealed. Not revealed, yep. The prosperity card was revealed. So I have... I have five flipped over. I think you have one, six. One, two, three, four, five, six yeah. flipped debts. So oh. I, I get the... This is brutal right here. 12? You get the 12 and I get the four. Okay. Oh, I'm really not feeling good now. And that's it. Final scores. Are you ready? Oh, I think you got a major one on me. Uh, Naveen, a.k.a. Caroline, gets 74 points to my 97. Yeah, oh, so you got a major victory. Uh, I played the tome game. You did. I, I Every single game I said, these are what the tomes are, I'm going to try to yes. just go tome. I guess it's not the winning strategy. Well, I think you have to do a combination of both. Sure. So let's finish this out. Sure. So a major victory is because um, I won by more, more than, than 15. 15 points. Yep. So, so then, these are your three. Thank face you. Face down. I get a crest. <laughs> so Can you make an additional? I don't think so. Let's see. So because I'm taking this crest here and because I have that symbol, that symbol, and this symbol, that's the fourth one. So I get another tome. Fantastic. Yeah. So how many tomes are you at? I think I'm at eight, and you had One, eight going two, into... One, two, three, four, five. I think five, you have 11. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. yeah. That's ah, it. Well, eight. <laughs> the Tome Saga. The tome Saga champ. Has been completed. Dang it. I mean, I wonder, what would have happened if I took that last debt? They both would have scored. You would have gotten uh, four, and I would have gotten 12. So six, 16, 16, it would have just... 
It would have, they would have neutralized each other. It would have neutralized. Oh my god. <laughs> Either way, it didn't matter. I, I had to win the game. Yeah, yeah. I had to straight up win the game, but I was yes. trying to collect tomes along the way. Yeah. And get a win. Right. But by me getting tomes means I'm not getting the multipliers in the well, castle. You, I guess you have to try to get the tomes that also help you get stuff onto the board. There was nothing castle related, sense. at least for the tomes wise. So that's why I kind of didn't do anything castle wise at the mm. beginning. I collected all this stone. To try to build buildings. To try to build buildings because I know there's a bunch of points out of buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so the game ended faster than I wanted it to end, <laughs> even though it was a long game. So. Well, that is it. it. That is the conclusion it. of the epic Tome Saga. Wow. So uh, let's talk about this. We can talk about it within the scope of Viscounts, and then we can talk a little bit about the Tome Saga, but we really plan on putting out a last video to kind of conclude the whole series. Mm -hmm. So we might yeah. want to just save it for then. Sure. Yeah. So Viscounts, what are your thoughts? Completely different game. Yeah, again. they're all they're all so different. Um, yeah, I like this one a lot too. Uh, well, the theme is consistent. Uh, you know, the first one is you're building the place. Second one is you're trying to protect and, and convert people for the place. And then now it's like, how are we going to make it prosperous? And now that mm -hmm. we're so many years in the future. You got to work in the you place. You work in the place. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> build up this kingdom, right? Because yeah. the king's not doing it. Yeah. So um, same, same kind of same kind of vibe as, as the, the last two games. Um, the art is consistent. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. I like the consistency in the theme. Uh, especially if you go from one game to the next, you kind of have, you, you, you know, same thing that we said in the last video, you, you know the symbols, you know what debts and deeds are typically. They just uh, function slightly different from mm. game to game, right? Yep. Uh, so player count, we've played this now at two, two and, and three. three. Yeah. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, both play very well. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to play it at four. The game can be long. It can be long. That is the one thing about Viscount specifically. Because the timer of the game are the debts and deeds, if nobody's taking them, yeah. then that can it be... Can yeah. Even the game that we just played right now felt pretty long. It did, yeah. I, I would say that in higher player counts, the collision benefits are a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. In the last game, in Paladins, I felt like it was a big efficiency. Like The big challenge for me was at least at one point in the game, you're going to feel like you're being inefficient. You're going to say, God, why didn't I take into consideration that extra worker to do this, right? Mm -hmm. In this game, the overarching feeling for me is jealousy. <laughs> like I see other people doing things that I'm not doing. Yep. And the benefits are so nice for doing any of those actions that I feel like, oh God, I should be going into the right. castle or I should be making manuscripts, even though I'm working on my own thing. Yeah. So that d definitely um, amplifies in higher player counts. Yeah, I agree. Especially in the castle, uh, when if you have more people going in there and kind of booting people out, mm -hmm. uh, it gets a little more interesting there. Um, you stormed the castle pretty fast early in the game, but you had the tome that kind of basically said, "Do this one." Yeah, um, which and is I know good. that for the castle, for you know, the first time we played this, I thought like, "Wow, the castle seems a little bit overpowered," but. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think it is. I just because even in the last game that we played with just the two of us, I stormed the castle pretty much the whole game and I still lost. Mm -hmm. I think I lost by one point. By one point to me. Yeah. And so I think that it's not necessarily overpowered. You just can't ignore it. You yeah. have to be in it. You have to be in that game mm -hmm. because it's going to be a lot of points to whoever is there. Yeah, I wanted to get in it earlier, but I had so many opportunities to get manuscripts and all that stuff. So I was like, I these are set collection. I mm -hmm. wish I could have fulfilled another full set. But you never know what you're going to get when you start uncovering manuscripts. Yeah. So sometimes it's like you uncover it. And it's like that thing costs five or six. Now, I, I don't I'm not in that game. Right. I can only afford a three or four. Right. So it gets pretty interesting there. Um, but, yeah, the castle is uh, I don't know. It's, it's a it, you definitely have to be involved in it. Yes. Um, you, have you, to can, be in it. you cannot, you know, just completely omit it because you do get benefits as you move up the, the mm -hmm. different levels. Yeah. The question about do I boot out my opponent or should I boot out myself in a two player game? It's interesting. It does get a little interesting because like that's two points to you if you're on the second level and I don't boot you out. And it's it's just more access because if yeah. you're going to leave workers there, then they have an ability to continue to fast track up yeah. to the third level. It, the way I see it, it's a four point swing. If I boot myself out, it's minus two to me. Mm -hmm. And if I boot you out, then it's technically plus two to me, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a four point swing. But it depends on if you yeah. need the resources. So there's a lot of decision making in here, a lot of um, push pull kind of decision making. Replayability wise, this game feels different every time. It's always a different puzzle, especially mm. the way that you have to coordinate the symbols on your board, yep. which uh, townsfolk you're going to hire in order to curate your deck. And it's just, yeah, it's just a neat puzzle every time, right? Yeah, I, I really like the, um, yeah, that puzzle of the symbols mm -hmm. matching because it's like, okay, 
these next I'm gonna set this up so that these next three turns is a big cash flow push yeah. the whole time because it's just same symbol, same symbol. And then once those are gone, they're gone. Yeah. And then, or at the very beginning of the game, you set up a, a big merchant push. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, now I got something which will then chain reaction and get me other benefits. Uh, it's it's interesting though. Every single time we play it, I, I'm pretty sure this is just the way the game is designed. But the merchant or the the trader bags, uh, after you get to about the third portion of the game or like 40 percent into the game those are the symbols that you rarely are going to try to revisit yeah. i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe we're just, I, I feel the same way like you you're like god i don't want to play these cards that have now, I'm married, symbols. now i'm married to this card for the next three right. rounds you know in terms of the weight this is i think it might be a little bit lighter than paladins i think so yeah. it's not it's definitely not heavy there's there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot to kind of go over but when you kind of get into it, the flow of the game, the the tempo of it, and just like the learning curve is not, it's not too much. No, no, no. yeah, it's good. Yeah. And just in terms of the mechanics, this is a very different game from the first and second game. Uh, l way less heady and way more of a flow mm -hmm. than Paladins, I would say, because you just kind of do your turn, you take your action, you draw up, and then you continue going. And it just goes around and round and round yep. until the game stops. Right. It's not a set number of rounds, and, and it's definitely way less um, multiplayer solitaire than Paladins was. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, the mechanics are interesting in this game. Um, it is deck building, and I like, I like this type of deck building where it is you get a card and you'll probably see it once or twice later on in the game. Uh, it's not like one of those like you play all five cards and then you know, draw a shuffle like right away. He didn't you know? like pure deck builders. I don't like pure deck builders, <laughs> so I like I like you know this is this is interesting the way this works out. Yeah, um, it's like incorporated. Yeah, right? yeah. I think I should be trashing cards more, and I still can't figure out when is the right time to trash certain cards. Um, because sometimes I do think I will need that extra symbol, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah. Uh, but I do like the fact that you do get a uh, a little uh, compensation bonus mm -hmm. for uh, trashing cards. Uh, coins or sil silver is the most interesting thing in this game for me. Resource? Yeah, resource, because it, it can get you to move further, and also you can either hire slash dismiss uh, different um, townsfolk on the board. So sometimes you really see a card that you're like, I really want that, but all I have is one coin and it costs three. Mm -hmm dang it how do i get more coins right now yeah like, silver is definitely the most dynamic of the resources yeah. you have too much of it when you don't need that much yeah. and then you don't have enough when you need them exactly yeah. so yeah definitely and i think it's interesting that none of the resources give you any points at the end of the game so mm -hmm. by the end i'm just like you're just accumulating resources and you're like i don't even need these that's what happened to me right yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you too yeah my favorite thing about this game is the synergy so it's all about synergizing your symbols and also gaining the the proper townsfolk who are going to get you benefits when you need them when you need it to to get you benefits when bumping them off of your assembly line or when playing it or maybe it's an ongoing effect it's just whatever is kind of playing towards your strategy you're kind of constantly puzzling through what combinations you need to be present on your board in order to do what you need on the actual board which is also constantly changing right because the options of townsfolk is always changing and so is the options of manuscripts as well as the positioning even in the castle yeah, yeah. the positioning of the castle to create those combinations that kind of let you move around the castle constantly. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you can rely on are the spaces for buildings and the spaces for trading. Right. But even those spaces can gain you those kind of like, I just need this one thing. Oh, I'm going to go over here and, and trade, or I'm going to go to that spot and build a building there because it gets me a connection bonus. Yeah. So there's a lot to kind of analyze as the game flows. The, right? wor the worst is when you, when you put out one symbol because you just like, ah, I'm short one stone, and mm -hmm. the only way I can get that stone to set up everything else so I guess I'll put this one person out there, this mm -hmm. one trader or this something, and then now you're stuck with that card just clogging up your, yeah. your you know, your your rhythm. And so <laughs> that part, that part, it gets really exciting for me. It's because like how, I, okay, so can she smash in the middle where I can then boot it to the far end right. so that I can just get out of here so that yeah. I can get something else going? Yeah, that virtue track yeah. part is interesting because you know in the first game we saw the virtue track was on the left hand side and that mm -hmm. kind of dictated whether or not you can build in the in the cathedral, etc. In the the last game, did we was there? A virtue track it's sorts? more like uh you like how much power you have how much like influence yeah uh, it was yeah. a little bit different, different and yeah. over here it's going to dictate which cards do you get debts or deeds it's also mm -hmm. going to influence what happens to your opponents it controls the, the timer of the game yep and so that debts deeds balance is is really interesting because yeah. it can really 12 points is a lot and you can see yourself even though you, you can see that you can score more points doing something else you still see yourself playing towards that timer, like, oh, I need to flip this over so that I can get that bonus point mm -hmm. at the end of the game. Yeah, right? um, I, I that's actually one of the, 
I know I said uh, talking about the coins and, and managing that, but yeah, the de the deeds and the debts are one of my favorite part of the game. Mm -hmm. Actually, the the fact that when the deeds run out, then you really want a bunch of flip debts and vice versa. So like in this game, you know, I I knew the tome and you knew that I was going to get that tome for the deeds. Yeah. So you decided to get a bunch of debt, knowing that you could probably try to flip it over because yes. you think the deeds are going to be the end timer. That was the hope. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well, so she knows that. So then I'm going to try to run out the clock and I will also do the same thing. But since I have a leg up on that, maybe we can score both. Uh, but <laughs> alas, you did not. It was actually a lot harder to not take that last deed I know. on my turn. But yeah, that, so the deaths and deeds uh, bit is both uh, something that I think is really, really interesting, but also something that's a little bit frustrating for me because that does make the game feel long, which is probably my biggest issue with the game. Mm -hmm is the fact that it can, it after a while, it's kind of like, oh, wow, when is this game going to end? Like, yeah. we're kind of just doing this for a long time and gaining all these benefits and bumping up our scores for so long, right? So that's probably my my number one. I guess you could technically criticism. house rule it instead of seeding it with 12 of each, maybe you seed it with 10 of each. I don't know, Something but then like they that. balanced it with, with those they numbers. Did, yeah. So I would just kind of leave it as is. <laughs> okay. But otherwise, this is a game that I really enjoyed as yep, well. Same. I'm not going to say which ones I enjoyed more than the other, because again, we're going to save it for the last video, but I did enjoy this one. I really enjoyed the deck building and all the, how, how the kind of the mechanics kind of flowed together. Mm -hmm. um, and just, the, just kind of like the tempo of turns. That, that's always like a nice little, it's roundabout kind of game. It's like yeah. a rondelle. It's another kind of rondelle system with the, with the mm -hmm. main game board, but also just the way that the, the turns go. It's a nice yeah. like carouseling, right? Yeah. And the, the player aid that's part of the player board is very mm -hmm. good. It kind of just, it keeps you in line. So you know exactly where you are. You just mm -hmm. look down and the, that's pretty much what you do. And your final thoughts? Yeah, same thing. I really like it. Um, we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk about it in the future. Well, so in the end, Monique has been crowned the West Kingdom <laughs> champ. Tom Saga. Tom Saga. <laughs> Tell me Saga. Uh, okay. She did it. She pulled it off. Well it done. was uh, quite the adventure. Yeah, you did it. Good job. So, well, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, tune in next week for a potential surprise video mm -hmm. that has to do with the West Kingdom series. Yep. We might not be done. Yep. But uh, more on that next week. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed the series. If you missed any of the other videos, we will have links to them up in that corner over there. They'll, they'll be over there. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Bye.